Yo, 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 we here, baby. What's up? Yo. Episode two. What's going on, A Fleet? Chilling, dude. Chilling, man. <laughs> yo, tell me what's going on with you right now, man. Not too much, dude. I'm stealth out of my mind right now, bro. I got the I got the black on black on black, dude. I, my beard even looks black in the camera, bro. So I mean, I don't. Even, can you see me? Yeah, I mean, I might need confirmation from chat, but you know, part of me thinks that you wore the same outfit last time. <laughs> Ooh, um, no, I got the. Uh, so if you check the bill, though, clean, clean bill. The uh, scuffed Under Armour hat's chilling on the door. I got oh, yeah. two. Can I, I get a three black Under Armour? Yeah, can I get a curvature check on that? Well, what's the curvature looking like? What degree of curve we got there? Bru never mind, never mind. <laughs> I'm not even sure, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, what's going on, guys? Welcome to episode two of the Aflux Shocker podcast. We don't really have a name for it yet, but you know, we're just going to talk about some stuff, have a good time. Uh, I'm going to throw a link into chat real quick. Let me know if this link works. But uh, if the link does work, then you should be able to leave us some questions. Today's subject that we're going to talk about is Outfit Wars. Uh, what, we th like, how, what we think about Outfit Wars, how we think we even got here, and then what we want to see from Outfit Wars, what could improve, etc. But um, I think first off, just want to catch up, see what's new. Are you doing anything in game right now? Are you working towards anything right now? Aflick, what, what are the vibes? Oh, dude. Um... You know, I guess we're going for what, number one on Emerald NC kills all time, just on Emerald. Um, you know, we already passed the top VS player a long time ago. Uh, we're just grinding out 100,000 gold anchor kills. I mean, just long-term goals to, to keep me in the game. So other than that, I mean, then we're what doing pill. Other than that, we're just kind of chilling. Nothing nice. too crazy. Nice, bro. Just enjoying the stream, just enjoying the community, honestly. Yeah, that's that's really good. I think having a small community like this is so great because you kind of befriend everyone so quickly. And then from there, it's not a matter of like, who are you meeting? It's just like, who am I hanging out with? Who am I about to chill with today? And there's a lot of great people watching, will watch, just a lot of awesome people in the community. So it's great. Um, I'm kind of grinding too. I'm, I've been playing a lot of TR. I hate it. I hate it, man. I haven't seen it, bro. I log out I, and, and my Twitch and then you start up, dude. I'm just, I feel like I'm progressively getting worse at the game because of it. Not because of playing the faction, but because of what I'm doing on the faction. I'm grinding out black camo. I'm going to try and get black camo for my final character. And then I won't have to try and get black camo ever again, unless I'm, maybe if I make like an alt or something. But uh, yeah, also getting ready for Pill, uh, Planetside Infantry League. We talked about that last episode. Feel free to check that out on YouTube, uh, Twitch or not Twitch.tv, YouTube.com forward slash Aflick. You can check out the first episode of the podcast where we talk about Pill and 6v6. But that tournament actually starts tomorrow. And we've been grinding me, Aflick, who else? Coach, Greg, the whole Bax team is getting ready to play. And then obviously the casters like me, Batty, Monkey, Gellos. Uh, it's invitational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, I yeah. will be missing. I'll be on vacation. So But you've still been grinding. You've still been grinding. You've been putting the you've been putting in the legwork. Um but yeah, man, I've just been trying to get better at casting, get better at being an observer cam, and then getting better at playing too, like in 6v6 is playing in a lot of internals. Uh Aflick and I actually just got out of an internals that we just played in. Shout out yeah, to fun, DA, man. shout out to Batty for letting us play. For real, um, man. It was a good time. But yeah, man, other than that, um, not really doing much else just kind of really immersed in the game and not really getting burnt out because of just like because last time we kind of talked about this too like in the olden days we kind of got burnt out because we ran out of things to do uh but not really getting burnt out like that anymore a lot of community built stuff that keeps me going now and really happy for it so yeah the the balance between live and, and jaeger aka you know the the screaming and and for me like streaming helps too and i'm assuming that's kind of also helping you so it kind of just gives a lot of different aspects than just live like we grinded live for like eight years man yeah so it's nice to have other options <laughs> distractions mm -hmm. yeah so today we'll just hop right into the topic we're talking about outfit wars like we said and uh i guess just for some background outfit wars is the new competitive game mode that the developers are pushing onto the game in order to increase that interest um and to really capitalize off of all of the different additions that they made to the game uh, for example, the Cordium Mining with Ants, 
outfit resources, a lot of that stuff is now being utilized in a competitive game mode. And it's uh, similar to StarCraft. And I know personally, as a friend of yours, that you're really into StarCraft competitive. I watch it, but I don't play it. I think I played with like Kwai and like Frey and a couple of people once, and I was like, man, this is this is crazy. So I just I like watching it. I follow the the tournaments online a lot, especially when I'm at work, just chilling at my computer. I can have it up on the other screen, so it's nice. Yeah, and I think that might be one of the issues we talk about for Outfit Wars when we start to discuss what we think should improve, uh, just like the viewer experience, but. Um, I, I remember when we were discussing what we wanted to talk about, you came across with the the info that the server, excuse me, the developers saw Server Smash, like what we were doing as a community and wanted to base a game mode off of that. Um, and I think we were kind of talking about the background. Um, just Can you give like some, just some, some overview of like what Server Smash is and then we kind of talk about the parallels and then where they kind of oh, contrast man. as well? I mean, Server Smash is just, uh, I mean, it's a competitive, community-driven event. Um, originally, you know, you'd have, like, uh, Matherson back in the day, and you had Watterson um, or Miller, et cetera, and you would just essentially, as a server, create a team. It could be, I don't know, 400 v. 400, 300 v. 300. It just kind of depended on what the teams could create. And then the servers, you know, would pick a faction. So you'd have one TR, one VS, one NC, one TR, something like that. And it'd be a specifically broken down map based on the size of the um, of the teams. Uh, there'd be a force commander, so like an overall lead. Then you had platoon leads and squad leads, yada, yada, yada. Different teams had different numbers of, or different outfits had different numbers of players or squads. Um, and it was just uh, going toe to toe with another server. Um, so it was like a, essentially a 1v1 Um and it was a lot of fun. You know, they as time went on, they kind of restricted different things, things that were you know just didn't fit or didn't feel balanced or didn't make the gameplay as fun. Were kind of restricted so that we could have um, a better uh, to me experience on Service Mesh. So it's not so cheesy or spammy or you know we want people to come back to it. And I think uh, you know we had that idea there for Service Mesh. Yeah, and I think. Uh... To kind of add on to that, there was a lot of different things that kind of made Server Smash so much fun in the beginning. And we kind of boiled it down to three points. Uh, the first is networking. You really got to like not only get closer with your outfit mates and with your squad. You'd usually have either a 12-man squad or a six-man squad, depending on the size of your outfit. But there was also one of the first opportunities that people got to talking and collaborating with outfits, not only from their same faction, but from their servers. So majority of the time before, you would never really play with a VS or a TR outfit, especially for us as a NC outfit and Bax. Um, so really got the a good opportunity to learn from different outfits and stuff like that uh, and like meet some great people that you know you otherwise would have just been versing unless you switched factions. Uh, you also yeah. had that hero mentality of like you could be the best like outfit, and I know you want to talk about that. That was that used to be your favorite thing to do. We would just go for the most kills. Like, well, it's like a, it's just a, Server Smash presented, and there's like stats at the end. You know, obviously you wanted to win by taking the most territory, but there's other things for for different players to look at. You know, I know like uh, like Gilly played in it back in the day saying you know people are like okay i just want to be like number one um for kills which still helps you take territory or grab points etc so or as an outfit you know you could do okay how did my outfit do as a whole were we the top you know we had 12 guys but we had you know 1400 kills you know we're trying to benefit the team and that kind of spotlight that you know you could you could have on an outfit or even a single player was was huge. It was a lot of fun and it brought a lot of attention to you and recognition recognition um, from the other server, etc. And it was fun to also okay like okay who's on Miller's team? Okay, they have they have twelve of you know whoever. Okay, like okay, and then Miller's like okay, Bax is going to be there. AC is going to play. You know they have a couple guys sprinkled in. And it's just it kind of started a nice rivalry. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And and another thing that was really awesome was the Watterson Matherson match because you know, the devs actually kind of got behind it and were like, okay, whoever wins, you know, gets the server name. Um, I mean that's how we got Matherson's Triumphs, that's how we got Watterson's Redemption. Those why those names are in the game. You know, I think at the end of the day, um, I can't remember exactly what happened. I don't know if we just said, Hey, we'll do Emerald, we'll, you know, compromise, we'll do Emerald after we won. Um, but that like feeling of playing for something, like a reward of like it wasn't even monetary, but it was still like pride in your server. 
um, was huge, man. It was so much fun and so many people part- partook in it. And I was actually in Canada visiting my, my parents at the time. And I remember I was, I think I was supposed to platoon it or something. And I was downloading it. Um, well, actually we were out, like we were deep, like in like, a in the mountains or something. My dad's like, uh, we're going to take the scenic route home. And I was like a two hour drive as opposed to like a 45 minute drive, dude. And I was like, dude, I have this like match coming up that I got a lot on the line for, but I don't want to be like rude. Cause I was with my parents and like, I obviously live in the States. So for me to be all the way up there and I was just like, can we not take the scenic route? Long story yeah. short, got home, tried downloading it. He had like the worst internet ever, dude. It took me like forever to download it. Finally got in the game after the match had started. And like, bro, my ping was like 400,000. And I just remember like people just like zipping around me. And I was like so frustrated that I couldn't actually be a part of it. Um, but uh, that's, yeah. Sorry, I went on a little tangent there, but. No, no. And I think I also have like stories of like, I remember we we named the one of the outfits when, because we would have to name our outfits and our stats would get tracked based off our outfit tag. Uh, I remember I was like, you had me squad lead for one of them. And uh, I had the alpha tag as the Wegman seafood department. <laughs> and we were called Wegs. And uh, I, I took off work. So I only worked Saturday and Sundays at the time. And service matches always fell on Saturdays. Every single service match was on a Saturday. So I would always miss them. And it made me so angry to the point where I was just like, I'm just going to start asking for work off. And I think it was the (laughs) Cobalt one that when we versed them and we were the Wegman Seafood Department, the only reason I named that was because I called in sick saying I couldn't come to work because I just (laughs) really, I I asked for the day off and they kept telling me like, we'll just wait till the day before it. And I just, I remember telling you like, bro, I don't care. I'm playing like, and uh, yeah, just, they were still like, ah, we need you to come. And I was like, I can't come and we just played and we ended up being like the top frag so that was really fun and that kind of goes into the last reason of why we liked service mesh the recognition uh like you could you this was your opportunity to not only be known among your server but amongst the entirety of the game and that was like one of the biggest deals especially back in like 2014 2015 when service mesh was the meta Uh, a lot of the times you would want to do the best and help your server, but you would almost prioritize being the best over helping your server. And there are a right. lot of there are a lot of funny clips of uh <laughs> of us just going, you know what, we're just gonna go to this other fight because we need kills. We're not gonna wait around. Well, yeah, but part of that's because the force commander, you know, is like I'm in I'm in command chat and it's like, hey, uh, where do you want us to go? We cat the base, you know, a minute ago and there's like silence. Like they're like, hold on. I'm like, your one job is to like direct us. So like it's more about like, okay, we're gonna go pick a base to actually help out because we're doing nothing here. Or we're holding the base against like 80% overpop. And it's like, hey, can we get some help over here? And it's like, uh we're working on it. It's like can we get we're we're out popped. Can we get some help? And it's like we're working on it six minutes go by, dude. And it's like, is anyone coming? Like, yeah, they're they're on their way right now. And then like another two minutes go by. Nobody's there. Yeah. And then fi- we, lo- we lose the base, and it was just, you know, some frustration there. But recognition, um, it's a good way to also showcase outfits that are new and upcoming or outfits that, you know, people kind of memed on or, you know, maybe they had a bad reputation or and they got better. But on live, you don't really get to see that. So it's a good way to say, hey, look, we've actually gotten better at the game. Here, here's us now. I mean, look at B-Way. We just scrimmed them. Um, I mean, they beat us. I mean, Dudas Flutus, you know, went off. Um, is he reformed? You know, I I don't know. Um, but that, But that's a good example of, like, taking a person or an outfit and – you know, the recognition that they get from pill or from service smash can increase and they can change themselves or, or show that, Hey, I'm actually a better player. I can play against good players and, and, and outperform. Yeah. And something else was just like, when you would verse somebody that wasn't your own server, you almost had to learn a new play style and your each server almost had its own distinct play style. And I remember there were a lot of metas like the Sunday meta, the Airball meta, and th- there was just a lot of different almost innovations in the meta of Planetside that came as a result of Service Mesh and learning Absolutely. and learning from not only the other teams against, or excuse me, the other outfits on your team, but then the other teams that you're versing against. So there was a lot of different stuff. And I'd say a lot of people look at it as the prime of Planetside, that heyday of Service Mesh being at its peak. Totally. Uh, mostly because everyone had the opportunity to get involved. And I mean, is alert is alert on steroids because everyone there kind of wants to has the same goal 
at the end of the day. On, on like live, you don't always get that with alerts. You have people not playing it, playing it. Especially now, it's completely different. But the alert meta was there back in the day, and that was a lot of fun. But Service Smash was like even more because everyone that's going there is like actually partaking, um, so to speak. So that was that was huge. Agreed. And I think this is a good place to start talking about Outfit Wars now. Uh, we kind of talked about this history of like why Outfit Wars, where it even where it came to fruition. Uh, but now we'll talk about Outfit Wars. Uh, very different. Uh, first off, when it comes to how you get into Outfit Wars, uh, since it's sponsored by the developers and it's one of those in beta alpha type things where they're still testing it out, not everyone can just play in Outfit Wars. You can't like challenge another outfit. Uh, you have this period of the first time was the entirety of a weekend, including like complete off hours, which was ridiculous. Uh, but now it's uh, qualifications are between certain hours during the weekend. Uh, which made a little bit more sense, but still rewarded some gameplay that we'll talk about later that we don't think is good for the game. Uh, but once you would qualify for this, each faction would have one team, or excuse me, one outfit per, uh, what would I say, per Server? tier? No, per oh, tier. Oh, so okay, you'd have yeah. like the gold tier, the silver tier, and the bronze tier. And then, yeah, it was three teams on each faction per server. Uh, so a lot of games were happening in unison. Uh, unlike Service Smash, where certain matches were allotted for each weekend. Um, so to talk a little bit further about that, um, do you want to talk about what you've seen from that qualification process and what you liked, if you liked anything, and then what you disliked, which I know you disliked a lot of stuff. <laughs> I mean, the qualification process is just um, for... But I feel like how the devs have always addressed Planet Side is it's... It's everyone should be able to access it. Okay, yes, if like, you don't like maxes or you don't like A to G, but that's planet side, so get over it and deal with it. Um, you know, those things are in the game. We're not going to get rid of them, right? Overpop, all that. So when Outfit Wars comes out, and 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 they're reworking this right now, so um, that should change. I don't know what it's going to look like. Yes, they are still in the, I guess, the testing phase, but currently. Um, it feels like it's something if you're first off if you're a small outfit like let's say backs or something or even da that has like a lot they're kind of coming back right for you to have 48 active people on at once and just in case someone's internet dcs or they can't show up for that match you know you probably need a roster of like 60 people okay active okay well you just excluded a majority of planet side players Right. So even if we want to partake, even if we and, and on on the, the live, the way to get there is is you, you get points and they kind of, you know, for capping bases uh, as an outfitter or, or whatnot. But they kind of didn't exactly reveal how you even get the points to qualify. Right. You kind of just got to play live. Mm -hmm. um, so even if we qualified, let's say we even qualified. But what if I have 24 people? Do I just go to the match with 24 people? We could technically qual qualify, um, which is just weird to me. Um but the qualification process to me should be something where you just sign up. We want to partake instead of let's ghost cap at, at a late hour or let's, you know, um, cheese to get there or over pop a, a base to cap it or, um, AOD has 400 people on and they don't even have to try to qualify just by having more people and more access to more bases, et cetera, it seems a little restrictive in, 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 into what can happen. I mean, look at DD12, man. Um, an outfit of like, you know, I, I think the model was like a squad, 12 people, right? The Dirty Dozen, whatever you want to say. And then they super recruit, bring in a bunch of 69 KD players, et cetera. And they're trying to qualify, right? But even with having, I don't know if they ran a platoon, I, I wasn't in it, but they ran pretty large for a while, and I think they just came up short, man, and they were on all the time, and they still, I don't think, got into the top three. Yeah, I ended up playing with uh, with Zyros. He recruited me into, right. uh, into assisting them, and yeah, it was a rough time uh, trying to qualify. It, it was a lot of fun in the beginning because we... We did our best to split amongst the continents, and uh, we can talk about that as well, where the, your qualification process is too broad, and then right. what you're actually using in the game mode that you're trying to qualify for is too small relative to what you need to get in. Right. Um, well, I think of, of a competitive event and qualifying for that event, there should be, to me, and again, there should be some sort of skill set, right? What, like in pill, right? Let's say there was a qualification. I would, you know, you need to win 
you know, matches or X amount of matches to get into pill. I don't know, against, you know, maybe there's like, if there's a hundred signups, hundred teams, and you had to, you know, beat X amount of teams or something like that, you would have to, you know, create a, a team, a roster, a strategy around um, winning in a 6v6, right? But on this qualification, I mean, you had a whole bunch of tryhards in DD12, great players, good air players, yada, 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 but it felt more like if you don't have people on all the time and a lot of people, it means it's going to be very difficult for you to qualify. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think something that should definitely be thought about is the fact that a qualification process for literally anything, think about it like a job interview. The qualification process for literally anything is to see how proficient you are going to be at what you're trying to do prior to doing it. And right. the way that the current the current meta for outfit wars is when it comes to qualifying for it does not do that if anything it does the absolute opposite you find yourself having teams that don't necessarily know what they're doing as well or aren't as i guess you could say uh, experienced in the game just due to their sheer numbers and then when you do have a team like dd12 that's trying to go really hard working with some other people almost setting up an alliance which i think we're going to talk about soon as well uh, you're you're going to end up having this situation where a great team that would have had an amazing match and made the game so much fun for viewers to watch well have no uh, absolutely zero chance to play in it. And that's extremely unfortunate. Well, it goes back to the point. You have, what, 48 players can play in your outfit if you make it through, right? On Outfit Wars, right? Mm -hmm. Or uh, close to that. But on live, you could have 400 people on. Mm -hmm. or even how more your, thousands <laughs> how could your how could your qualification be that off from the actual event right the, the, i guess what my my what this boils down to as simple as it can get is the qualifications do not match the event exactly you have two different things going on mm -hmm. which it just feels completely scuffed and that's why they're working on it. i mean like i mean they're aware of it we just don't know what that's going to actually look like when it comes out definitely uh, and then moving past the qualification, uh, once we get to the actual game mode, uh, the game mode itself is the three factions facing off in the Desolation map. Uh, the Desolation map, uh, when we're I think on the YouTube video that we're going to post for this, we'll, we'll have it overlaid, but it's a little too complicated to put on stream. Uh, but I think the majority of people know what the Desolation map is, and I definitely recommend looking it up, watching some videos about Outfit Wars, uh, the specific game mode that's actually being played, some gameplay of it. Uh, but it's essentially a smaller version of like a typical map you'd see, like Asimir or Indar, but it's way, way smaller. All of it's the condensed. work gates yeah. are brought in, and there are what I'd call Tier 1 bases, Tier 2 bases, and then Tier 3 bases. So the Tier 1 bases are the warp gates that they spawn in. The Tier 2 bases are the two bases that are closest to their warp gate. And then the Tier 3 bases are the three bases in the center. Uh, something that we see as viewers, and I think a lot of people have actually played in it too, uh, what ends up happening is the team that's doing the best, let's say a B-Way, or a KN1, these are like the two teams that won recently. Uh, what will end up happening is they will do very, very well in the beginning because they are one of the outfits that are experienced in the game. Uh, KN1, very, very, very known name across the board. I think even outside of the Emerald uh, server. Same thing with B-Way. They've been very known. They won lane smash. They're getting ready to play in pill. Uh, so very well-known outfits. And I'd honestly, I'd say they... They almost spark fear in whoever they're versing, especially when you're versing a team who didn't qualify because they're good. They qualified because they had enough people. Uh, so they end up getting double teamed, whereas you have 48 people and you're not just versing another group of 48 people. You're versing two groups of 48 people that have this unspoken treaty to make sure that you don't win. And that isn't competitive, unfortunately. Uh, and we can talk a little bit more about that too. I think we should just stick to what it is for the moment. But uh, what ends up happening is it's similar to what you do on live server. Uh, you try to capture these bases. You need to be superior to the other two outfits. And every base you have accrues a point over a certain amount of time. I believe it's every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds. I'm not too sure. I think someone from chat can probably give us a... Uh, uh, what the actual number is but every 10 seconds you get a certain amount of points and the first team to get to a certain amount of points i believe it's okay it's 10 points or it's 10 seconds whatever you you essentially you accrue points based on the amount of bases uh, you have and i think it's one point per base 
And then you're trying to get to 300 points, I believe. And then the first team to get to 300 points ends up winning the entirety of it. Um, but it's a th- it's a three way event, right? I, I just I mean I, I know you kind of hinted around it, but it is a it's three it's all three factions. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's not like Bax versus B way. It could be Bax versus B way versus K and one. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I mean it, yeah. So it is this: you cap a base, you get the points for it, and then you move on to what cap try to cap another base, and and I guess maintain a lead or or just keep try, i mean trying to keep cap, capping bases or i guess defending them which is similar to live um or even server smash in a way um but i guess the way that it plays out is different so definitely uh yeah and it's it's one of those things where once you get to that point uh that point threshold you end up winning the it gets the continent gets locked similar to how uh like indar would on an alert and uh the faction that wins is also the outfit that wins um a lot of the gameplay is based around the new things that they've added recently to the game so outfit resources are used uh, a lot uh things like orbital strikes and citadel shields are used to i guess outmaneuver outclass your enemy uh and then same thing with ants uh you'll see certain outfits use the ants to farm the cordium get the resources make their own bases inside of one of these desolation bases and then add things like uh like a top shield to it uh they'll make another orbital strike station so it's very similar to like an RTS game and i think that's kind of why we talked about StarCraft earlier um where you know you have you're almost the you could have a force commander, the person who's right clicking and dragging all the units. But the thing is, every unit that's playing is that actual person playing the game. And in theory, it sounds extremely interesting. I remember when I first heard about it, it's it was one of those things where I was like, this could be cool. It, it could be mm-hmm. it could be a lot of fun. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the the three way nature of it at its core is flawed. Uh, you can't have a competitive game mode where there's three contenders and there is no, there aren't any teams. Like you either need to have four contenders and make it two V two or have it be one V one. And that's it. Uh, and we can talk about that a little bit more, but I think what I want to talk about first, so we're not just dragging the, the game mode is what we do like about the, about the, the game mode itself. Um, okay. And I can kind of start. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you might not have much to say because it's very I got a, different. I got a couple. All right, I then go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Go, we'll ahead. go back and forth. Um, one, I like the I. Okay, first off, I like the I like that they even tried MLG. Okay, that that failed hardcore. Okay, um, it's just hard to have forty eight players and and good players just kind of naturally gravitate towards each other. Um, so I like the fact that they're even trying to add a competitive event because I feel like they've they've been asked for a long time to do that okay and and they're at least addressing it in outfit wars so that's exciting by nature i suppose um and and two outfit wars i mean we've talked about this on on stream so many times outfits should be the focal point of planet side too and it felt like they haven't been for literally eight years i was thinking about the other day there's no point in being in an outfit i can just i can squat with backs i could squat with b way i could squat with da i could be in the platoon i can run the platoon there's there's no reason to not be or to be in an outfit you don't gain anything by being in an outfit i don't gain access to the anchor because i'm a part of backs right i can just solo farm without backs i could leave backs today and nothing would change my stream would be the same nobody would even know unless they just realized i didn't have the tag um but i do i do like the idea of let's try to get towards a competitive event let's try to create something for the community i think it's important especially since server smash which is now community smashes it seemed to be fewer and far between and the the popularity of it has kind of dwindled down um from what it used to be um but yeah i mean go ahead what what do you like about it um i think and these kind of go hand in hand it increases it increases interest in the game there you go. Yeah, Especially absolutely. for that weekend um, where everyone's like, you know, we're going to grind for Outfit Wars and it rallies the troops. It's almost like a raid night. You have a mm-hmm. purpose to because we used to do ops back in like 2014, 2015. Uh, we tried doing like a little stint uh, this period, like when I came back and I tried running ops. But I think both of our mindsets are more in like the 6v6 hyper competitive lane, not really the play on live server anymore. Live server is more just like a playground at this point hone in your skills, get better, etc. Try out new guns, maybe grind directives. It's uh, whatever your whatever your mindset is at the moment, you can just do. It's an open field, but once outfit worst time comes around, 
it's it's like all hands on deck for these outfits and everybody starts logging in you see people who haven't been online for one month two months three months like come online to help out the outfit to like you know win something it gives you a reason to play and that goes into the next thing of increasing server pop uh, I think a majority of the viewers that we have are probably Emerald players. And I think a lot of the people who watch or stream are also Emerald players. But the the server at the moment, especially during like prime time, the 8 to 10 period of the of the night, it's just it's not high pop anymore on a typical day. Like you log in on a Wednesday, there's a continent and a half maybe. And the continent that's popping off is Indar. So it's just deadlocked there's no capturing bases there's no sense of you're kind of just you're just you're just farming it's not you're not having like that that sense of we have an objective so uh, i think when outfit wars time does come around it makes the game better but when it comes to the actual game mode i i don't really have much that i like about it i think we we have a lot of stuff that we have about constructive criticisms and we kind of broke it down to two things of uh what we think is what can get better as the player and then as the viewer um but yeah if you don't have anything else i'm that's kind of all i have for it as well we can start talking about what we think and again get better. Man, look like i get it's a rough it's a rough edit you have to test it and you have to test it on live and you have to test it more than once and it's nothing that's going to be on jaeger that you're going to get a get a good feel for it um so I, I i get that part of it but um yeah i don't uh other than that I, I, there's not i mean i guess on the in the in the, in the testing you know infantry was even a less of a focus and they kind of listened to some of the feedback and they did kind of add you know some bases and some more infantry focused play which was you know is is a good sign to where i think it, where it's going but um the actual presentation of it in the actual matches that yeah no yeah uh, so we'll kind of go into our constructive criticisms when it comes to us as players first. Uh, and we kind of already touched about the qualification process. Um, and we kind of said what we don't like about it, but we, th but what we think it should be is I think what the next thing should be. Uh, so as we said before, it, the qualification process doesn't, it doesn't select teams based on their aptitude or their skill, but rather the amount of people they have on. Uh, I think something that definitely should be looked at is to figure out a way to qualify outfits. If you want to make it this big event where only the best play at it, figure out how to make it so that your best players play so that you have a more interesting viewing experience and a more interesting playing experience. Uh, and I think we kind of talked about this a little bit. Uh, we were talking about almost like alliances uh, where, and you kind of touched on this already about just the difficulty of getting 48 reliable people. And then you need those reserves because the more people you have to rely on, the more likely you are to lose out on somebody or 10 of them. So you need these, like, you need about like 64 people just to have enough backup. Um, so what, what are your, what are your thoughts on like the mode itself? Like what could improve there? And then maybe we can talk about alliances too, of like what we think could do, we, the, the devs, excuse me, could do in order to make it so that backs could play with like can one and another outfit to ensure that everybody has enough players. Oh man, it's a, it's a big topic. So don't let me go down the rabbit hole too far. Um, no, that's what we're here for, bro. Go down the no, rabbit hole. Fair. Number one is I, I I'm, I'm trying to, and I've asked my stream many times, Name another game that is a three-way that is competitive. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, StarCraft, I guess you could maybe do... I, I don't even think... I mean, it's not competitive, so there's there's not even a, a path for that. Um, you cannot have a competitive three-way. I can't think of anything. I, can't, I played sports my entire life. I can't think of anything where I've, I've never faced just another team. I'll play another team after I play that team, but I'll never play two teams at once. Because by nature, there's no way for it to actually work. I can kill TR, and TR can kill VS, and VS can kill NC, right? Which is, 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 is a loss for everybody. Or you can focus on one person with two people. There's no way that it works out to where it's a balanced experience. Um, I mean, think of it was like $10,000 is on the line. You're playing great, and then you get double teamed, and you lose, and you don't get the money. But theoretically, you, you were the better team. But since you had to fight twice as much i mean yeah if you win it's great but realistically how sad would you be and pissed off would you be if you if you were to lose because you got double teamed mm -hmm. I, I think that has to be addressed it has to be eliminated pil we don't do that service mesh which is what they stated they wanted to model 
Outfit Wars off of. Server Smash worked. I think there could have been a couple more restrictions added to it to bring better balance. But Server Smash was never this, okay, we're going to have three servers fight, fight, it, fight it out. No, mm-hmm. you, you pick a faction, and one server is going to fight another server on a different faction. And I think that's what they need to garner towards is it's outfit wars. It's not this faction wars, okay? We tried mm-hmm. that before, and that failed. It needs to be one versus the other. And I think once we address that, I think a lot of things are going to change. Um, I think that's the biggest point. So I don't know if you want to touch on 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 the three-way aspect at all or if you think mm-hmm. that's pretty direct and we've already covered it and we can move on to the next. No, I actually do kind of want to break that down a little bit more. I think I f- I'm forgetting, and I tried to look it up while you were talking. It's a cognitive bias of humans to if there's a common enemy or somebody with the most stuff, you want well, it's we, almost like a Robin Hood live, token. Right? When alerts yeah. are big. Yeah. If you get get too much territory, what are the other teams gonna do? There's no yeah. point in focusing. And like, yeah, that happens on live, they might just be out of bio lab for the entire time because no one cares, right? Mm-hmm. But in a competitive event, you care. So it's like, okay, well, if B Way is winning, they have twice as many points as the other two, why would we focus each other? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's but go ahead, sorry. It's definitely th- that cognitive bias almost ends up making it so that whoever is the most prepared and is the the best team, they get punished the most for being the best team. Uh, right. And that just goes down to a cognitive bias because at the end of the day, that's what makes sense to do. If you need something and you have two adversaries, one adversary has the majority of the thing that you need and the other one has a lesser percentage, you're going to go for the one with the majority because it's going to be the easiest to take away from. Now, when you make it so that two people are trying to take from one, the one person is outnumbered. And there's no sense of there's no sense of being able to quell that or counter it when it comes to being that person that's being attacked. Uh, yeah, I mean, and that just ruins ahead, the entire it. sense of competition in the game mode. You're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to to make yourself more competitive by p- even playing at like the peak that you can because you're outnumbered two to one. And once you end up being the person that's down and and set to a lower standard, I guess, and there's somebody else becomes that number one spot, then you are like, okay, well, I now I got to do the same thing. And it's just a ring around the rosy of whoever has the most ends up losing the least. And when we look at the time frame of Alpha Wars, the amount of time it does take to accrue the points to win, what ends up happening is a team does really well. The two teams focus that team. It loses out on all the points. And then whoever comes back from that 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 downward spiral of whoever lost the most ends up coming back up and that team is the likely one to win times we've seen like b way is that, that that's a great example of it where they were the number one they went down they had to like sit behind the scenes for a bit wait for the other two teams to fight each other they came back up and then won the whole thing um and i don't that just doesn't feel fun that doesn't feel and, like yeah. it's just it, and i'll let you go ahead it can be like, you can have that perfect scenario. I think Ant Dant talked about it from Kane 1. You can have that perfect scenario where you still pull out the win, right? Mm-hmm. And it felt great. Um, but over the long, the point, we want, you want a competitive event like Alpha Wars to the longevity of it to survive, right? You want it to be fun, people to come back. And I could never imagine playing football in high school and playing against, like, like they have 15 players, right? Or, like, think about, like, a, Think about pill. Let's just use pill. Uh, I have six guys on my team, and they have eight on their team. Mm-hmm. That is like th- that doesn't work, right? You want it to be balanced. You want it to be fair, as fair as possible. Yeah. You know, and and that's what I think a three way takes away from is that the 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 fairness of a competitive event. Um, to 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 create a, a, an event that's fun. Yeah, and the game is already. I don't want to say plagued, but there is it's rampant with imbalance just due to the nature of factions. Um, right. Like I, I personally don't think a truly competitive tournament can occur unless both sides have access to the exact same things, have the exact same numbers, because at the end of the day, it becomes a true right. test of skill. Um, we or have you the, have a go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, we have like the interesting nuances of the faction system where when we look at a game mode like Pill. You can choose your faction, and it's almost like what you want. Do you want the high damage, low fire rate? The high fire rate, low damage? Uh, high magazines? Like, what what faction do you want? Um, and I think that's to the maximum extent that a competitive game mode can go to. 
before it becomes un- non-competitive. Uh, because yeah. I've been I've been saying harping this for years. Like if I ran a tournament, only NS weapons would be allowed because it would be true balance for both teams. Uh, because a lot of times either the viewer or the player will blame like, oh, well, you got to use the Orion. You got to use the anchor. You got to use the MSWR. I, I do think, though, the, the balance around um, infantry gunplay is is at the best it's been. It feels mm-hmm. very, very tight. Um, whether or not, you know, it's more of a preference. Like, I like the anchor, but a lot of people don't like the anchor. So, yeah. um, but at the same time, if I didn't get that and I had to play, you know, Orion or something, I might not like that as much. So, yeah. It's always been something that it would be nice to have dev support to where it's like you just pick your gun, dude. If you want the Orion and you're playing blue, yeah. it's, you're not you're playing in C. You're just playing a color now. And you have access to all weapons. That would be that would be ideal. But uh, I don't want to get der- derailed from the um, three party uh, uh, outfit wars. And mm-hmm. the other thing that happens is for viewers, you, know, you see this on live all the time. You have so much territory, or you have no territory, and then you start taking territory, and the other two guys are fighting. Okay, and now we're ghost capping. We're in a competitive event trying to trying to win something, and now we're not even fighting anybody. We're just capping a base. There's no one here. <laughs> you know, like and like you just you take it like up here and you just drop off. Like most of the time, like competitive, like in like StarCraft is like you start off slow. You have your your builds. They're talking about the builds. They're talking about the players, and then like it slowly amps up, right? And then you start having these big battles and kind of have this like tug of war back and forth, and you have a winner. But Outfit Wars feels like it's just like. You could have like nothing going on. It could be like twenty well, minutes in or something. That's right? and like, and I wouldn't even say that it goes up. And we can talk okay, about fair. this a little bit more fair. because the way it starts is so boring. Uh, and we can talk. We'll actually jump into this. The playing in the mode itself. Uh, like if you were to graph the action, it's definitely it, it's like a dead heartbeat. You hear beep because it's. I guess there is the build up. It's like we're talking about the teams. Here are the outfits. Here are the players. Here. Oh, let's look at how they're gonna start. Three, two, one, match start. All of the all the reavers and sights flying overhead, the ants driving, and they just drop on these bases and there's no clash. And there it is, stops. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, We're yeah. just gonna <laughs> sit on the point and try to capture it. And well, that's it. So like server smash is a great let's just can we well are you done with that point? I don't mean to interrupt. No, you. no, go ahead. Yeah, we're talking about so that. So server smash is like you have that the hype of like, okay, here come all the reavers coming out of the warp gate, right? It's mostly air, I think, in server smash. Um, and then, you know, there's there might be a base where it is neglected, okay? That could happen in server smash. But most of the time, it's like, okay, we're gonna fucking tuck on the point, we're gonna bring our guys in. We 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 know we beat them to the point at this base, and they're gonna be, you know, dropping right behind us. And you have this immediate like this build up and then it's like Boom! Like we all hit, we all start fighting, mm-hmm. and off it was like, okay, here, everyone's coming out the gates. Here we go, and they're stopped, and they're capping up, they're capping their first point, um, and nothing's happening. Um, we're gonna wait so here for two like minutes dead. and see what's gonna happen two all minutes right. from now. Now, don't get me wrong. StarCraft does like other things do have that. Um, I don't think it's net like in StarCraft you have to like slowly like okay we have our you know twelve SUVs and we have to build one and then we got to start start our build order. So you have this kind of downtime and um, you have these very slow moments, very repetitive moments in the game, um, which is not good for it. But you can't get around that in StarCraft too. But I do think they could get around it in Outfit Wars. Just either. Um, you cap it quicker and you can move to the next base and, and, and fight there. Or maybe you even already have it capped and then you can just go straight towards points of contention. I don't know. Um, mm-hmm. But to start it like that, just it automatically, like if I were to tune in, you know, just, oh, Alpha, where's this playing? It's like, oh, maybe they're not playing. Maybe they're testing something. Like, I don't, okay, well, I'm just not going to watch it. Nothing's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we can kind of jump into that a little bit more uh, as the viewer. Um, once we get to that part, but I think almost going back to the player standpoint of it, uh, service match had such a, so many different opportunities for different openers. Like you, the, the weeks that you were prepping and getting all the outfits ready, you were sitting there like, what is Miller going to (laughs) do? What are they going to do at the start? Uh, or like, what? what is Cobalt, what is Connery going to do at the start? And what are we going to do and how are we going to counter them? And the, you would drop on a base and there was the chance that no one would come because that wasn't part of the, the, the opener of the other team. Uh, but for other times, like you would get the biggest Zerg ball. You thought all you would need to do is send 12 people, but there's a whole platoon at this base because this is their critical base that they're basing their entire assault off of. And that was that's almost the whole point of Planetside, the territory control, but over a large scale. When they brought this down and brought the complexity of everything down, you got to this point where 
yes, there's that downtime, but even when you get to that next area, so like again, we can talk about it with the tier one, tier two, and then tier three. Once they hit that clash, eventually, like maybe three or four minutes in at the tier three bases, there's there's no there's no opportunities for that sort of counterplay because you know exactly where they're gonna where they're gonna go. They're either gonna go to your tier two or they're gonna go to the tier three, and that's it. Like there there isn't there isn't much ambiguity or Depth, complexity yeah. behind it. Yeah. Um, and that kind of goes into the, the map itself. We were kind of talking about this before. There's no base variation. They're all just these donuts <laughs> and they're it's and planet side. One of the fun things about it is the complexity of the bases. You got tech plants, bio labs, amp stations, powerhouse, right. triple stacks. There's so much, there's so many different things that you where do you can put the face. Sunday? Where do you put the beacon? Yeah, where exactly. Do you put the backup Sunday. Where you, um, yeah, dude, like knowledge of the base. Even in pill, like we'll bring it back to pill too. Like you have to have knowledge. Like there's different jump spots. There's there's different access points, and like it, it creates so much more depth and desolation. It feels pretty fucking desolate, man. It feels like you got a couple rocks on the map, you got some donuts, and that's about it. And again, I hope we build upon that. But what makes plant side unique is every base is different, whether it's balanced or not. And like learning those bases makes it fun and like learning like new ways to tackle a base or to to be better at that base. And we talked about this on stream, but back in the day, tech plants didn't have the the balconies in the back. The, there, there was a generator where the primary balcony is in, in the back and you had the grinder doors up front and you had to funnel through those. Okay. Um, there's nothing else. I don't think, I don't even think there's the garage doors on the side, man. Um, and then when they, I remember they added the balcony doors in the back. Nobody like knew about it. Like they added it, and then nobody knew about it. Um, I remember like DA would like not. It's not an exploit, but they would exploit that knowledge weakness from other people, mm-hmm. and they would just crush through. They'd camp that balcony, and they would just hold off hordes and hordes of players. And then obviously, as time went on, even AOD like knows about the balcony and now. We'll, we'll defend it or attack through there, right? But that like um, change in like the meta, right, is just. It's just fun to see that develop and like to see like some people pick up on it real quick and then some people are very slow. And Outfit Wars, it feels like we already know everything about it. Mm-hmm. Right? I tested it twice. I felt like I, I know the entire map. There's no like secret strategy or like something you can like learn. And, and maybe there's some small things there, but it felt like when I was testing it, it was like I, I got some hype about it. I'm like, here we go, here we go. And then just kind of like, oh, there's only two bases that they could be at or. There's it's just a yeah there's just a donut base like there's no complexity to it there's no progression um like almost like a tug of war right it just feels like this whack a mole oh they're yeah. going back to our other base oh that was a, no, they're not they're going over here okay let's go over there oh okay then it, it, it just I don't know no and that's a great way to describe it it's and it's funny because they're all these donuts it's literally like can one popped up here all right bam we got to stop them yep. but then it's like it's all these things happening at the same time it's not a skill sort of thing it's not about like did we kill them better or right. are we did we outplay them it's just all right we capped four bases we have the majority to, on a technicality because there's three people playing now we just need to quell these attacks from all these people and since they're both attacking us to repeat because this is one of our our things having three teams it it makes the game mode instantly non-competitive. There's no, there's almost, you're, you're almost rewarded for not trying. Oh yeah. You're, you're rewarded for like, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to get some resources. I'm going to cap my two bases right here. I'm going to hold on to them. I'm going to let you guys fight over there. When you guys get overly invested into each other, I will jump in and then steal things. It's all right. about like it's it's about just being like a little a little rat, like caustic. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, Tarkov. Uh, that's actually quite funny. Uh, but that's a good way to put it because I mean, think about other competitive games. Like if you sit back in, um, look, oh, we'll take it back to pill. Like on Paris season, if you sit back and you don't push into the L, you lose that initial fight, or you don't even push in there at all, and they gain control right away. You're automatically at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. But in Outfit Wars, it's like, if you sit back, uh, you might not be at a disadvantage at all. You might be at the advantage, right? That's what it seems like, which also doesn't create hype. It doesn't create viewership. It doesn't create a good event that people want to come back to. Because, like, man, I played in that event, but I'm in backs and we're a good outfit or something. And, and we just kind of sat there and we sat back. Like, that's not what I do on live. Like, I'm known for, like, killing people or something. You know, like, it just kind of feels like you're, che- like you're cheating yourself because that's how you win. Yeah, and I think the last thing is the better team is just more likely to lose, um, and that's that's just a 
it's just a product of 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 whatever the the game mode is at this point. It's uh, the the person who was the best gets punished for being the best just because they're outnumbered. Um, but as a viewer, that was all of our things as a player. But as a viewer, I think there's some extra issues. <laughs> uh, and uh, the biggest thing that we're kind of we kind of think is the the clash or spectacle. Um, you look at uh, like pill. Pill's a great example again. We're going to talk about it a lot, especially with it coming up this weekend. Um, Pill has this 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 build up, um, you know. And as a caster, I can kind of go through like the JSON that we use. Like there there's the video, there's the song, the trailers. Then we hop in, we introduce ourselves as casters. We go into the lineups. We start analyzing like this is the six man that they have. This is the six man that they the other team has. We talk about the maps that they're gonna play. There's this build up, right? It's like oh man, like they're gonna play on Aiken and Ganon. It's gonna be Bax versus uh versus B Hot. Um, we got Aflick on that team, player to watch. Uh, oh, but B-Way has Dudas. He, he has really good roof control. So we're definitely going to have an eye on that. And like, you're almost preparing the viewer for like, we're going to see these things. It's going to be so, it's going to be legit. And, and everyone's like, all right, bet. Like, hmm, here we go. I can't wait to watch. Then the countdown happens. Five, four, three, two, one. Buses, everybody hops out. Ganon, a kill can happen within five seconds because of the hopping out of the bus, going down the bridge, a, a bolter shoots somebody, gets a perfect shot, instant kill. Within five seconds, you have killing, you have points being accrued, they're trying Conk's to flip stuff, Conk's going off, the casters are wilding, you're able to see all the players. Now, let's pull everything back now. You make that five seconds of downtime, about five minutes of downtime. And and I won't I won't even get started on like my least favorite part honestly is just the build up to outfit wars. A lot of the the casters at this point don't know everybody in the outfits because it's not feasible. There's 48 people. There's three matches for each side. That's like 400 people. Uh, so it's, well, and, and okay, pill Eurodome uh, farmers. Now it's not the same casting group, but there is a little bit of experience. There is some things to go off of. This is slowly built up, um, but there's a lot of investment from the casters. I mean, shout out to Gellis, man. I, he doesn't take a lot of things serious, and I know I hound him for this, but he takes casting serious, and he's improved. He's good at it. It's actually he, he, it makes it fun to watch while he's casting. So shout out to Gellis for that. Um, uh, Billy even getting serious on it. Um, you, I was watching the other day. Um, I can't remember what the, what uh, match it was, but I was impressed. You've already improved. Like it, it just sounded good. Um, and I and and nothing against Archie. Nothing against um, Faber. Um, and Outfit Wars in general is going to be tougher, right? It's not a 6v6. It's not a 12-man roster versus a 12-man roster, okay? It is much larger than that. But it's already gimmicky because you're trying to learn the map and, like, maybe you've never used an ops cam before or there's so much more that's not there. And I wish they – and I don't know if they ask Gellis or other people. Maybe they just ignore that and they were like, okay, who is, who's a – who's popular on YouTube. Let's get them to cast, right? Have you casted before? Are you good at casting? You know? Um, and I think the knowledge of the game for some of the casters is not even there. Mm -hmm. And it's very difficult. I mean, that's like putting me in Dota two and having me cast. Uh, first of all, I would struggle in plan side too to cast it just because casting is its own experience and its own skill. It's a okay. Beast. It's really a beast. Yeah. But then to put like a newer player that doesn't understand the meta, the game, the history of these outfits that are fighting each other, um, and and to place them in there, and then also give them tools they haven't used before. And I get it, like okay, Dev Team doesn't have a lot of money. I'm not going to prep this thing and make it huge. But I think we could have had maybe a, even a better casting lineup. And I and let's just say the same people were to cast. I do think they would get better with it, obviously. Um, but this is something that it feels like PSA. A lot of resources are being sunk into it. And I'm scared that if the hype diminishes right away and people start pulling back and like that are burnt out from it or whatnot, and you know whether that's the casting and the way that 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 works in the viewership, like I'm scared that you're just going to kill it off like PSA. PSA was dead on on arrival. Yeah. And I don't want Outfit Wars to be like that because we've already wasted time with PSA. I don't want to waste time with Outfit Wars. And it's like, okay, what construction? It's like, what do we have to like? Can we just keep things simple? Yeah. And be smart about it. Yeah, and there's just that, I think the the last thing that we can kind of talk about from the viewer side too is just everything looks the same. 
and even as a caster to go to kind of talk to you about like what you kind of said there too like there's a lot of talent in the in the planet side uh the community like gelos is i've learned so much i remember somebody after the after the cast that i had with leroy they were like man who needs gelos like shocker number one that was crazy but i was like i need gelos like this dude is the reason why like ev- after that cast the first thing i did was go to him and say like how can i get better because he's the one right. who does it the most um so he's so good at it man yeah really there's impressive. so much talent and we don't even have that many. We talked about this in Pill already, but there's not that many tools for the casters. Yeah, you and we have really a high, nothing. a high, high production value, a completely volunteer. Everything's player driven. Now mm-hmm. we hand it over to the devs, and we're like, "Please give us something competitive that right. we can use and like, you know, strive for. It'll make the game better, increase revenue for you, but." it needs to be sponsored by you and driven by you. Right. And we get something like Outfit Wars where unfortunately it's just not going to cut it at its current state. Um, so we kind of have five points of like what we'd like to see it become. And the first thing we have is uh, making it multi-outfit and like combining your forces into an alliance. And kind of like how you said signing up for it. Um, the, the, the qualification process should be based off of the the group that you're bringing rather than the group that you're playing live server with um I, to bring it back to like psb events in general you can play lane smash you can play pil you can play all of these different game modes you just have to gather a roster get it together sign up and then it's the job of whoever the administrators are to get everything set up and then put you against someone who is going to make an equal fight uh, when you have a B-Way, one of the best outfits on Emerald, versus like an AOD, or I think they versed, who am I missing? GSLD, I think, in the first one. Uh, like, the, the GSLD and AOD are not at the skill level that B-Way are. So giving that and handing that over, and I know the, the player base has done a great job of making community-driven content without needing the dev support you could outsource this to the community i'm sure ev- someone would that is responsible enough would be willing to do it because people are so passionate about this game um but it would be their job to match a beat way against like a bax or a dd12 like one of those higher tier fits but or, or okay or i mean you just have a normal qualification like starcraft 2 we'll use it again as an example like you might have a 64 team or player event, okay? And a lot of the times the qualifications aren't streamed. But you just have like, okay, um, you know, I'm like, let's say I'm I'm seated number eight and then I go against the number one, I lose, and then he moves up. Like you do, and then like as you get closer and closer to the finals, you start like streaming them and like you know, you have the round of eight and the round of four, yada yada yada. I mean, something very similar could be to play out here, um, with a little bit of community support, you know, um, to manage it. But the same the same as I think could play out. And, and uh, to me, in a, like a tournament like that, why do we have to? We don't even have to match good teams against each other. They can just play that. They can play up, and once they earn that spot, then you can showcase it in like a in a large streamed event or something like that. You know, yeah. for those like top three spots or something. I don't think it's bad though to necessarily have AOD fight backs. I mean, that's it gives you a chance to fight a better team and to learn from them and then to move forward. Um, you might get matched, you know, against a, another bad team, but because you might have a lot of outfits interested, you know, early on if everyone can just sign up. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah and we were kind of talking about this too about the numbers that are required for something like this there is at the moment the game is just not at its peak like it was before so these outfits especially the mid-tier or smaller tier outfits just don't have the ability to be able to you know feel the 48 man rosters so giving the opportunity for you know, it kind of, and like, we're really passionate about our outfit tags too. Like I've been in backs for like six years now. You've been in backs for about six years, maybe seven years now. So like, we're not going to leave backs to join like another outfit and play in this game mode. Like we're going to stay in our outfit. And honestly, we're going to be hard headed about it too. We're going to be like this out, this game mode's not good because uh, it only rewards like the, the bigger outfits. So I'm, I'm going to be stubborn and not want to play, but giving the opportunity for, us, we could confidently field 12 people or 24 people. And if we have another outfit like a KN1 or an HZD or whatever outfits are left on like NC to group up with that we would want to and we have that sort of relationship with, we could just do it easily without making a new outfit or merging. Because again, we're passionate about our outfit tags. Um, 
So yeah, and we, we kind of called it alliances. So uh, if if you could make an alliance and make your outfit cooperate with another outfit, and it doesn't even have to be this one on your faction, I guess too. Like it, it's at the end of the day, it's outfit wars, not faction wars. So you could right. have like or population wars. Yeah, <laughs> so it could be like DA and Bax or one TR and GSLD like grouping up together. I don't think it's a bad thing to even consider doing different tiers, right? If, if you want to do platoon, we, we platoon. As a tier, so 48 players versus 48, I think that should be a level. And then maybe have a 24 v 24. And then maybe even a 12 v 12. But maybe just keep it 24 v 24 and 48 v 40 and have like two tiers. I mean, other uh, um, games have multiple events. It's just one usually trickles down to be the, the most popular and the best. I mean, StarCraft has 2v2, right? I mean, I don't. maybe it's not like a big deal. Or you, you can go into the ladder as 2v2, right? Um, so I don't think that's a bad thing to necessarily do. Uh, because then it let, lets anyone partake, and, and twelve v twelve or twenty four v twenty four might just work better, right? It might mm-hmm. save the mode. Yeah, forty eight v forty eight. There's more burnout. Um, there's more people involved, and it's like it's easier to have a rotation the smaller you go. Like six to six pill. It's like okay, we can have a, a quicker rotation. Twenty four v twenty four. Forty eight v forty eight. Much more difficult to have rotations, if any, because you need everyone available to play. Yeah. Uh... And I guess to go into more about like that qualification process sort of thing, like the just overhauling it has to be done, like how it's how it currently gauges the skill of an outfit based on just the amount of points they accrue on live needs to be changed with something. And if they want to keep it in this sort of qualification process because they can't they can't support the sign up process, then what could be done is bringing down the scope of which like tightening the scope of which we are qualifying these teams for so rather than every single person in your outfit is the the is contributing to your outfit score only the top 20 best or the top 40 best that are playing during that weekend count toward your score uh and making it less about i guess base caps but just overall score of those top 40 people and uh, I think combining that with the people, because you also have to sign up for Outfit Wars, uh, combining the, because we kind of talked about this too, like you, you only have 48 people that are going to play. So why are we calculating the other 5,000 people that are playing if only 48 right. people are going to be able to play? Um, Dude, there's, I, I just, honestly, I think you just sign up. There, there cannot be, there's no, it would take too much work for the dev team to actually, in my opinion, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe they'll do this and it'll be great, but it's going to take too much work to, to narrow these things to where they actually work. We're going to get a new qualification and we're going to test it. And I don't think it's going to work very well mm-hmm. unless they come up with something that's so like minute. Like, how do you judge an outfit that has four players? How do you judge an outfit with, tw- with 12 players, right? Or, I mean, active at that time. The other thing is, Okay, B Way's doing it on this weekend, and they're on Indar, but we can't get on Indar. We're stuck on the off continent. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing. Do I, I go I'm, to TR? Oh, but Bax is not on TR. So, like, how do we, how do we get involved then? So it's like, there's so there's too many parameters that you cannot control on live play to have the qualifications on live. It has to be a separate thing, and for them to build a separate thing where it's like, okay, Bax is gonna, you know. Uh, the qualification is going to be we're going to fight three teams. It's AOD, uh, DA, and something else. And like, and depending on how we do, you know, that will get us into the um, into the event. But they would have to then structure like a battle island or something where you know, you have or Jaeger, you have to like fight on there, right? And that just seems like too much more work. I think you just sign up, you get in. That's just the easy way, easiest way to do it. Yeah. Because why not? I What's think... the issue of having every outfit evolved? Because right now AOD is already going to get in, right? As let's just say a, a larger outfit that's maybe not that good. Is gonna be able to get them because they have, they have the players, the people that are like maybe they're gonna take a little bit more serious, like like um, K and one or something. They don't have the 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 live play. Well, they did because there's not a lot of NC outfits, but DD12 for instance, they don't have the the longevity on live or the players on live to make that happen. So it's like it's like the players that, like the outfits that don't even have to try just get in, and then the outfits that really really try it makes it very difficult. So why not just let everyone in? True. The outfit's trying to get in, can't get in. And the outfit's don't, like, uh, oh, yeah, sure, we'll do it. They get in because they have play Like that, just sign up. Let's let let's, 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 We'll play. And if it takes longer because there's more outfits, so what? There's more people trying to get in, and there's more hype around it. There's more outfits. There's more exposure. Yeah, and making it so that – because I think the issue right now is the – the it's imagine if pills 
qualification for Pill 2 was rather you playing to get to the finals and playing against other teams and proving that you're better than those other teams to get to the finals. Instead, it's everybody's going to play on live and whoever gets the most points will play in the finals of Pill. So there's only one pill match now, <laughs> and right. there's there is no there there is no build up in the sense of like a pro league or like uh, this sort of uh, a league is a great way to describe it honestly having a league of like all right B way is gonna verse this team Bax is gonna verse this team and then like we're slowly we're climbing in on the brackets well, it could be like a March Madness thing where we come into like exactly. whoever the best two teams yes. are. Yeah, That's how so, a normal competitive event happens. Yeah, and it gives you the opportunity to play it more and have more sort of outreach. And yeah. uh, I think that kind of goes... I think we kind of forgot to... Or actually, no, this is one of what uh, we'd like to see it become, so we can leave that till the end. Um, but I think the next big thing is increasing the base variation. It, there's no... Uh, there's, there's not enough to watch on Outfit Wars to keep somebody watching the entirety of the day. Um, a great example, I would say, to compare it is CSGO. Uh, oh, CS... bro, I was going to hit that. Go with it. Hit it. Yes. I was about to... Whew. And both the viewer and the player stand. I think we might have two different things here, actually. Um, for the viewer, like you will watch a CSGO tournament for the entirety of the weekend, the entirety of the week, every week. There, are, There's ESL Pro League where it's pro teams versing each other uh, just to get more points, and it's almost like a World Cup sort of system where they're trying to get to the bracket stage, so they're playing in groups. And then those matches, they'll start at 9 in the morning because they're European teams playing until like 10 p.m. because North American teams are playing. And the people that are watching are consistent. You will see the same names in chat like over and over again. Um, but for for Planet Side, this Outfit Wars game mode is only once a month right now. And understandable, it's still like in its, uh, its preliminary phases. But that very first, the very first match that was streamed was such a dud in my opinion all three of the matches per server were played at the exact same time so if you wanted to watch all of the matches well i'm sorry you're gonna have to only watch one and then check out the vods for the other two but spoiler alert everybody's already going to tell you who won um which right. it, it ruins that sense of being a viewer in the moment you know oh uh, and in the moment's best like there's a lot of plants I, or starcraft 2 content that i just i saved to watch later and i'm like it's not live i don't care anymore yeah, and go ahead. I, I didn't let you kind of talk about your point. Well, you're just saying like the map itself, which the map and the bases are just it's desolate. I mean, desolation and is a great way to no describe pun intended. It. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we I, I hit that point earlier, but I mean, like when I think about CS:GO um, and even in Pill, man, it's it's okay. You know, Aphex going around the deep flank here on Pale Canyon. Okay, no one's seen him. He's you know he's underneath the balcony. He's coming in here. Like okay, this player's coming from uh, you know roof balcony coming down or CS:GO. It's like you know they have these areas that they i don't watch enough of it but like you know they're like okay he's hallway and everyone knows yeah, yeah. hallway is this location right mm -hmm. or that you're doing this thing and now it's just like it's just an open like field bro he's and it's attacking like, relic a they are yeah, attacking relic, relic b a. they're flying to relic h it's like yeah there's no and and it doesn't have to be like csgo where it's like he's going cat he's going long but... it doesn't have to but that um but you there's bring just, back the there's scope. There's options. There's mm -hmm. options, scope, complexity. There's Biolab. There's Amp Station. There's Tech Plan. The, and, you know, even if they kept it three way, like we have Cold Tier, which is a great example of a smaller map that's brought yeah. down in scope, but still has variety. There's so much stuff that could happen on that map, and it's just completely unused. Um, but yeah, increasing the base variation right now, I think, is huge. Uh, trying to bring it to a state where the. There, there are different ways for a team to start the match and everybody isn't starting the exact same while also making it so that when a caster comes in and we bring it, we bring, cause there's the two scopes of outfit wars, which is another kind of issue in itself. There's the big scope of this is what's happening across the map, but then here's what's happening in the specific base where a fight is happening. The, the big thing of this is what's happening in the map in itself is boring in the beginning, but there are clashes. But then when we bring it down to that scope and of what's happening at Relic A, it's just air to ground killing like these guys that are trying to cap a point. Then they drop out. Maybe some beacons come in. People drop pot in and the fights are kind of meh. There's no it's not like pill where you have these really well made maps that have been chosen by the community. And you're playing on like a Ganon or an Aiken, and there are different ways to play those maps that lead to success. Uh, so, I don't know. Do you have anything else you want to kind of build off of that? 
I mean, don't get me wrong, dude. This is something very difficult to cast. This is something very difficult to prepare for. I mean, even if you have two factions, I mean, look at Server Smash and, and the casting of, of that. Um, there's so much going on besides the one fight that you're out. I mean, I think again, we're gonna take it back to CS:GO, Pill. We'll take it to StarCraft. There, those are so much smaller, and there's so much stuff that the casting and the uh, observers miss. And they're experts. This is what they do for a living, essentially, right? They get paid to do this, and they still miss things. Like CS:GO, the, the TTK is so fast, man, that like sometimes like this guy dies, and there's like two other guys that are dying, right? So like they, they snap to it real quick. We don't even have that option yet, right? In Plant Side Two, and now you have three three different perspectives, three factions going on it, three outfits, and multiple fronts, and the pacing on Plant Side Two. Outfit Wars, to me, is so fast and so whack a moly that you're just jumping around. And Server Smash we struggled with this when they um, streamed it. There's just so much to encompass and so much going on that you're, you're going to add a third perspective now. Um, and it's like, cool, we're at this fight here, but does this fight matter? What else is going on around? Okay, I see the points flipping. Can we please see over here? Uh, we missed it. It's gone. Yeah. And and it's, it, it's, it's very ambitious. This is a very ambitious thing to do. And the yeah. larger you go, the more ambitious it becomes and the more difficult it becomes. And then, okay, Faber decides not to come back. Now you have to train a new person to try to understand how to do this. On that complexity, at that scale, yeah. that's, t- that's hard, man. That's harsh. Definitely. And, you know, there's – it's it's weird in the sense of you don't – you're unfortunately not given the opportunity – to to like watch the game kind of how csgo would let you where um you know there are people who stream it obviously like you can watch the overarching stream of the people who are supporting like the major tournament but they also stream the game within the game so you can load up csgo and then watch who you want to watch yourself and if that is the case then that would be cool but you have to give everybody an observer cam and the way observer cams work is you're literally a player inside this invisible vehicle so anyone could just hop out of the vehicle and start like messing around with the game uh so you're kind of you're locked into who you're watching and whoever you're watching is the person who's catering your experience and uh this person who's who's watching has to be well versed in the game mode but not only is the game mode young, we kind of talked about this again. The the and I don't want to, I guess, like I don't know, harp or be mean to anyone. Uh, but like I don't think the the talent of the casting uh, crew. That's what we talked about earlier. I mean, yeah, the talent of the current casting crew isn't to the to the level that I think that you know some of the casters that do pill do. Because if you had like Gello streaming uh, uh, like Outfit Wars, even if even the game mode in its current state, like me, Gellos, Billy, we'd find a way to make it a very, very exciting thing to watch and a very right. like, a pleasure to watch. Um, well, there's no repetition either. Mm-hmm. PIL, like we're doing, there's so many teams scrimming. And I know I have to guess about this, but um, there's, they're just, all these scrimmages are being streamed if, you know, if, if it's allowed, right? And there's so much repetition, so much time being put in. Alpha Wars is like you have this little blip and then all this time goes around, a little blip. Like how do you as a caster grow? How do you learn? How do you – There's no one has access to the isolation, right? There's no like learning the map or like getting like more comfortable with it. It's like, okay, we're going to do Outfit Wars again in a month. Here we are. And I forgot everything about it. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a very – there's no building upon itself like Pill has or any other normal casting of an event. Now, it's a very different event, a much larger event, so I think it's more difficult to do that. But without access to the map and people playing on it repetitively and scrims and things like that taking place, there's no way for a caster to even grow on Outfit Wars. And I do think that, yeah, Gels or somebody else that has experience from Pill would, would, would present a better cast um, just from the aspect of understanding Planet Side and the game and the outfits as a whole. Yeah, and I think a lot of casting... Another thing I guess we could just talk about real quick is like we cast in duos for Pill, and uh, I think the best casting duos are the Gellos Billy or Shocked or Leroy, where you have like Gellos and Billy are very much they bounce off of each other in the sense that you know one will be very tactical and like look this is what they're doing we'll talk about the game we'll go into the meta the other one is exciting you know it it makes you want to watch and then the other person makes you want to learn and same thing with me and Leroy like Leroy is very well versed in the game knows a lot about the players so Leroy is really good at analyzing like look at what look at what coach is doing coach is doing x y and z look at what uh saiyan is doing he's known for these things this is what he does and this needs to be countered and then you have someone like me that's just kind of yelling keeping you engaged in the game like look at that crazy triple kill you don't get that 
because of one, there's only one caster now. And a lot right. of the times as somebody who's observing, like me or Gellos flying the observer cam, we're, we're, we're tuned into what we're watching, but our co-caster will let us know, like, this fight's about to happen, and we fly there as soon as possible. Right. There right. is no help for the caster, and then at the same time, there's not enough knowledge from the caster to know where the fight's going to come from. Dude, that's uh, such a good example, and that's why co-casting or multi-casters are, well, I'm really just co-casting is so strong, because when I don't have something to say... So much easier for you to come in here. Doing the podcast with two people as the same thing. If my train of thought runs off, you can just jump in, right? Mm -hmm. And it creates more hype. It creates more of a, of a better environment. And this is – it's not really off topic, but it's it's a small thing. But um, shout out to Gels again. I'm pretty sure this was him when on the Aiken map. You know, he talks about just the weapon switch from the L.A., right? That they wanted to play a little more passive. They want a little bit more range. And, like, I don't even think about weapons like that, right? I, I, I have almost 300,000 anchor kills. I don't know anything outside of that, right? Um, and the, the, the knowledge level of Gellis or some of these other casters that they know, okay, if L.A. is going to choose this weapon, this is what they're looking to do with it. It's just huge, man. And, like, we don't even – they haven't even been doing that, doing it that long. And it's nice to see them catch that switch and then talk about it. Mm -hmm. It just shows the level that they're growing at, even for something small like Pillar and Planet Side in general. It's great to see that. Yeah. And uh, we have two more things about what we'd like to see get better. Um, one is having some sort of way for fights to develop. Um, I think I, a lot of, I, I had like a, a period during this quarantine where I kind of got into chess and watching competitive chess. Uh, and a big thing from like grandmasters and just GMs in general are about developing your pieces, developing the board. And when you think of like Outfit Wars and how they're trying to base it off of like a server smash or an RTS, it's it's chess. It's you have a certain amount of units and then the other team is supposed to have an equal amount of units. And it's about outsmarting and outskilling. And the way you get to that point is you develop the board. The board in this situation for Outfit Wars and for Service Mesh was the map. It's either Indar, Esamir, Amrish, wherever we're playing on, that is the chessboard. And we're trying to develop the board so that we get to advantageous positions, win out on those advantageous positions, and try to get the enemy to blunder. Uh, you don't get that in Outfit Wars. Uh, and, that's, and we kind of talked about why already, but just the fact that that's not there it makes the depth it's become such a shallow game mode and when you get to that shallow level of there's not there's not enough stuff happening at the same time you're not just you're just not able to you're just not able to kind of make the game exciting to watch because there is no meta game you know because a lot of times when i watch like sports or i watch uh esports in general like you can't you, you can't really fully know what the other team is thinking and you don't really and as the, as the viewer you don't know what either team is thinking so you're almost their theory crafting on behalf of both teams like if i was the coach i would do this but then you watch them right. do something else and you're like oh crap let me write that down of like oh i didn't know you could do that but with alpha wars it's just fly drop cap all right get up fly drop oh we're losing that what let's try and stop oh wait, the out pop all right we fly over there and yeah it's and then the caster's like oh i gotta follow everything it's 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 a rough time so not having that sort of sense of development like you would see from chess or from service mesh because that had that exact same thing you would we had prioritized bases we always went for the ascent we always went for the bio labs like the the extremities of the north and south parts of the map so that we could kind of develop our, our territory right. in that direction towards the work. Well, I got a cringe moment coming up here. There's no front line, man. There is, but it doesn't feel like that. Okay. Um, and having like a front line in server smash where the, you know, there's just a border of the bases and like, you only know they can hit these bases and like, yes, you have an outfit worse, but it's so simplified that there, it almost doesn't feel like there's a front line in a way. Mm -hmm. Cause you're just hopping around to these like different areas and it just feels like I said, too rushed, man, too rushed. You need that presence of stability and, like you said, progression. And I think the problem is you'd have to redesign a map. You need, like, a very large base or something, and then you'd have progression through that, right? Like, okay, we took the generator. Now we, we, we were able to, you know, we took the bridge and, like, at a chemical lab, you can change the color, color of the bridge, right? Mm -hmm. um, just little things like that. Having progression, like, and then building up to, like, this, this moment where there's, like, uh, the climax of the event. There doesn't even feel like necessarily a climax for the event. Mm -hmm. Like there's like a main fight that's about to happen, right? Yeah. And some you might get that a little bit, but that's not even there. 
Yeah, and our last thing is just how they stream it. Uh, if the if the devs really want this to be a highly viewed event, uh, it needs to be. Excuse me. Whoops. It needs to be. It needs to be streamed on an outlet that has maximized viewers. Um, so, a great way to describe this is how they stream their dev updates. I think they yep. average about two thousand viewers, maybe three thousand viewers. Uh, when they do one of those update streams, it's usually like midway through the week. Everyone's working, but they're still watching. Uh, so, you know, having that many viewers from a channel that has a lot of followers that are still kind of interested in the game, but they're back, they quit, or they're kind of waiting for the game to have something new. Waiting for that next update that's worth coming back to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so having some sort of stream on the main channel. It's like, you know, the observers that or the observers and casters of CSGO or, or pill, like big game, small game, whatever. We're not we don't stream on our channels when it comes to official games. Right. We stream right. it on like the PSB channel or for CSGO, like they'll stream it on the ESL or the the face it, like whatever the Twitch channel is that's sponsoring the event. So we should have that be for Planet Side since we don't have sponsors like that. Uh, where we have like a big ESL group or MLG or something like that. Uh, so, you know, giving specific streamers specific matches and then allowing them to directly stream onto the Planet Side 2 Twitch channel will give more consistency in the scheduling. We'll make it so that you're not kind of like, oh, am I going to watch this match or that match? It gives you the ability to watch all of the matches as they occur throughout the day on one consolidated location. Exactly. And you don't have to feel like you're getting thrown around like, oh, go to twitch.tv slash this. Because like I remember when we were watching the first thing, like all these different streamers were all watching the same match. And we didn't care who the streamer was because we didn't really know any of them. So we were just seeing whoever had the smallest amount of delay so we could know who won first. And that's just confusing. You want it to be a combined experience for everyone. And when you have chat going crazy, crazy stuff going on on the screen, casters having a great time, seeing a lot of action you get momentum snowball starts to happen you get more people wanting to look at the game random viewers will come through check it out and you know if that'll be the final i think tick off of the list for them to have this be a mode that people are excited to watch but also help the game improve so. well and again it's a it, small dev team i get it man but you need more tools for something this large you need that map like kind of there and like you need to be able to see everything like okay we see back is moving over here they're doing this at this point um you know okay let's just say you leave the map normal like okay they're not there's not a lot of action here we see what backs is doing you know they're moving to get to grab the h art, uh, artifact but we see that b way and aod are going out of here at, at, at the at the i artifact so we're going to zoom in here we're going to talk about this fight but we have but we know on the back end we have this this greater map or a mini map you know of like the whole thing but we can see the pieces that are moving right because when i watch starcraft i look at the mini map a lot too and like sometimes i'm like okay you guys are gonna miss this widow might drop or something right um and i think we need a, a little bit more tools for the streamers to create that environment of actually knowing what's going on and and having that that chat of you know and, and being able to see all the pieces at once mm -hmm. all right well i think this concludes everything that we kind of have written down. I don't know if you want to talk about anything else or if you want to... I'm not going to lie, bro. This could be a seven-hour long. There's so much I could talk about. <laughs> no, we got to... We got to... We got to... What's the word? Got to bring down... We, we got to slurp it from a straw, bro. They can't... We can't just give all of our content in one go. Uh, well, I mean, I'm just talking about Outfit Wars Direct. And, oh, and, true. And, but I guess something that I actually did want to touch on is just it doesn't know what it wants to be. Exactly. Why do we need construction? Do we need base building? Do we need, um, you know, uh, orbital strikes? Do we need all these things? Or can we, like, just take a step back and, like, slowly build upon it and add things that are of value? Okay. Um, they didn't, the Bastions are currently not in them, right? So, I mean, they were able to take out something. It's okay to take out stuff to make something better. And I think, like, they really struggle with that. On, especially on live or, 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 or this is a competitive event. Let's what makes it the most fun. And I think taking a step back, not just throwing everything at it, like, well, we have construction, so let's just put construction in there. And it becomes this thing where you, you, you don't even need to use all these things, but people feel like they do. And it just becomes this gimmicky kind of like, nobody even knows how to play it. There's just too much. It's too complex in that sense, but the map is so simple that it's not needed. We know that infantry gunplay works very well. We know the air game, at least a while ago, and even like in Service Smash, it worked well. Like 
the air fights worked okay. Like they were actually a challenge. They were fun. Um, again, the, the the way the domains interact with each other on live, I don't think is is healthy. And I don't think it promotes a very fair, balanced thing. But I, I don't think it's bad to take a step back and just kind of break down planet side, and then add those pieces back in as you fix them. Like we're trying to do everything that's planet side right now, right away. Outfit wars. Here's a new map. Boom. Here you go. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's take what works and let's build off of what works. So we don't just kill another competitive event for a planet side too. Yeah. And looking at it from a business standpoint, it's like the more the more things fail for this game, the more likely it's going to just disappear. And if, if construction doesn't work on live, it's not going to work in Outfit Wars. Yeah, like 100%. If you, can't, if you can't put two walls down and go like this, most of the community is not going to be able to do that in Outfit Wars. And it becomes something that's almost like irrelevant. And it's like, why is it even there? And it kind of takes away from the game. And I think that's what I'm just going to end it there and let you keep going on your, on your point. But if it doesn't work on live, why are we bringing it over to a competitive event? No, and that's true. I think there, the thing that really helps a competitive game exceed or succeed, excuse me, is having simplicity and understanding, but nuance and complexity in mastering. And I think Planetside has that in its infantry gunplay. It's easy to understand. Aim down sight, pull down. But getting good at it and really becoming one of the best players, it's a process. You have to know your positioning. You have to know the places you're going to. So that's why I think so many people in this community right now like watching like Planetside Infantry League matches. Uh, just yesterday, we had essentially what I would say record numbers on both my channel and Gellis' channel watching the two matches that happened yesterday. Yeah, it was uh, incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, and so much. Like, chat interaction was amazing. Like, you, everybody was trolling, but that's just our nature as, as a community. No, that's, at this point. that's Twitch, bro. That's, that's just that's Twitch. That's Twitch 100%. There's no way around it. Yeah, and, like, and I think that's one of the biggest advantages that we have as a group when it comes to being a small community is we embrace that. Um, mm-hmm. like we don't, we don't ban people that come and just start like saying funny stuff in chat. Like we enjoy the fact that, that they're doing it and we're just going to let, we're just going to let them, we're, we'll join them. Like if there's a good copy pasta, Dude, you'll just the more viewers it. in chat, the more reckless it becomes copy pasta, all that just spam this glitch memes. to help big rich. Like <laughs> exactly that. But like anytime you watch CSGO, like that's just like being, tsh- and there's always that serious person like, Hey man, you think Richard might use this, the, the, the TMG 50 next, next match. And then of course no one answers and it just keeps going. And then you got all your memes and stuff, but that's Twitch chat in a nutshell, man. That's mm-hmm. just, it doesn't matter if it's Starcraft two or whatever, the more views you have, there's just so much going on that everyone just trying to, you know, do their thing. And it's kind of like this reckless. I mean, think about when you're watching like a sporting event and you're just cheering nonsense, bro. I'm on the football field. I can't hear you, but I'm just, I'm cheering. Dude, coach, what do you do this? You know, it's like, it's just what you do as, as, as a viewer yeah. of an event. You just kind of, you drink a little bit, you go a little crazy and you enjoy yourself. And that's what Twitch chat is. Yeah. And I think my last point about just planet side in general, when you talk about these game modes, uh, like, cause I, I think from people that have viewed now, they, they kind of understand that like me and you are very much into like competitive game modes. Last time we talked about Pill, now we're talking about Alpha Wars and how we want it to be more competitive. And the the I think the biggest marketing point of Planetside ends up being its biggest flaw when you try to bring it to a competitive level. Because yes, Planetside is marketed and is and is loved by the community because it is a high intensity high numbers uh there's tanks in the on the ground there's aircraft in the air infantry running towards things and three factions yeah three it's just chaos and carnage but it's not a good viewing experience it's a good playing experience like people enjoy and we can argue on that i think for hours too but when it comes to a viewing experience you need to bring the scope down so that we can see individual play uh, yes. And like when you watch Pill and you see Greg land like some nutty quick scopes, or you see uh, Zyros get like a triple kill, something like that, like and it's only against like a small amount of people, you're there to see it close on the ground. But mm-hmm. once you have to bring everything back so that I can see what's happening on Relic A and Relic G all at the same time, it's like 
I can't see these individual plays. And I've heard I've heard from people like like Liddy streamed it and Richard streamed it when they uh they played with the Vanu Cats Vanu Cats, excuse me, for uh the previous season two or whatever they want to call it for the second outfit wars round that they did. Uh like there were some sick plays that they did and uh they like they ended up losing, but there was some cool stuff that happened and I watched back their VOD to see like what was up. But when I was watching the casters, we didn't see any of that because we had to be super zoomed out to see all the stuff that was going on. So yeah, it's too RTS y and the 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 goodness of Planet Side. Those experiences are on the ground, man, right? With those individual players. And that's where that's where the magic is happening. Okay, the base flips because you had overpop at it, okay, or you had ATG spamming it. Great. But let's see the stuff that matters. And it's hard to do that with the bigger it is, right? And yeah. that's what you're talking about. Three factions makes it even more difficult. Definitely. Again, Service Smash struggled with this. Um, and again, we are very infantry focused players, but Server Smash did it uh, pretty well with combined arms. Okay, um, and, and we embrace that. And, you know, we're not necessarily happy with A to G, but um, you know, I, I just want to see Outfit Wars develop into something that is fun for outfits and competitive for outfits, and it, it's something that people want to come back to. It's not super exhausting. Competitive events can be exhausting, but. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm hopeful for it. I, and I, I always say this about Planet Side, and everyone, you know, in chat always dogs me like, bro, Planet Side has failed us for eight years. But it's like, well, we still play it a lot. Mm-hmm. There's and something there. The events. core yeah, is there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Agreed. I mean, we, so I'm hopeful. I'm always hopeful. As long as I play it, I'm hopeful. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I will send this link one more time for anybody that wants to slide in a last minute question. But um, yeah, essentially, you know, we, we might not like Outfit Wars in its current state, but there's a lot of progress that could be made and tweaks that could be made to make it better. And uh, although it might require a complete overhaul of what's going on at the moment, there's still a lot of assets that could be reused in order to make it something more fun, but isn't as much of investment for the developers and for the company itself. Uh, because these are like salaried people, they are they are costs towards the company, and the more resources that need to be put towards developing this, uh, the the less likely they will be to doing it because it has to make money at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, the we just to kind of go over what we talked about today real quick. We talked about what Alpha Wars was. Uh, we talked about what we liked, what we didn't like. We kind of went into the history of Service Smash and everything that we we thought was was good from Service Smash, and what we thought was well taken out and put in, and then all the things that we thought weren't really, uh, I guess, properly put into Outfit Wars. Uh, and then we talked about our our criticisms, constructive criticisms of both uh, as a player and as a viewer, and then what we'd like to see it become. Yeah, and we and we we get it, man. They. They're dropping outfit wars on us in whatever comes before alpha and beta. I don't even know. So we're getting it in the roughest form it could possibly be. And and it's rough, man. That's what it is. But, um, and we have to remember that. Um, but that's what we're getting. We're not getting outfit wars in like, okay, we're dropping in. Here you go. Here's this beautiful thing. It's, we have to hopefully get there. And I'm just scared that it might fizzle out because of what it's trying to be. It's trying to be too big. So that's what scares me, but I'm hopeful. And maybe we can get something that's beautiful in the end. I don't know. Agreed. Uh, but yeah, we'll hop into some questions here. We did get a couple good questions. Uh, uh, one is, uh, wouldn't Outfit Wars leave out the individual player in smaller outfits that aren't populated? How would they cater to them and not leave out the player without an outfit or a smaller outfit? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just said Liddy and Sane played on, uh, they, they were ringers or whatever you want to call it. it. It's not hard. I mean, we could probably play with someone else if they allowed us to or they invited us to play with them. Um, but it's outfit wars. And I think for plant side survival and what made plant side great outside of solo farming or farming with friends is outfits like capping the base. And a lot of people don't care about capping the base, but there's nothing better than fighting a, a, a pill. You, you cap the pace base in pill and it's difficult, but if when capping it, you get more points and yeah, you're showing your dominance. You're showing that we're better than you. We cap that base, you know, and you progress through that. Um, so as a solo player, if you want to partake in it, you just need to be in an outfit or ask an outfit to play. I mean, we had ringers in Server Smash that played for backs or for other teams or or, or whatnot, and that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, maybe that seems like it might take away from the experience, but there's so many people that are trying to participate in a 48v48v48, 48 48 48, you almost need that. Um, 
So I, I'm hoping that answers the question. I know they're talking about also like how do you showcase individual player skill in Outfit Wars. Um, I don't know if that was being addressed at all, but maybe I answered it. I'm not sure. Um, if you want to add to it. No, I think, yeah, you answered that really well. And I think to add uh, the, the biggest thing that's kind of carried the community and the player base uh, for so long is that sense of community. And at the end of the day, the game is an MMO. Uh, and MMOs have like raid nights, guilds, etc. And Outfit Wars does a really good job of enticing people to want to join outfits. Uh, I mean, we kind of saw it and we talked about it a bit. Like DD12 had essentially mm-hmm. record growth uh, and became a really relevant TR outfit. I would say they're probably, you know, now they're playing in Pill. They have a lot of good players. And you could attribute yeah. that to like the merge with 69KD. But I think in general, just... They got put on the map. B-Way got put a lot on the map, too. They had, like, record application. I think they I mean, closed think recruitment. It, in addition to what you're saying, like, okay, Bax can't partake in it. We know it's not going to happen. Okay, I'm going to go somewhere else, and I'm going to partake, partake with, with them. A lot of people went to DD12, or a couple people. You yourself, you know, we're talking about, I was trying to play with DD12 and get in. So I got experience. Riker is another one. Um, there's options out there, and it's and it does create a little bit of hype. I just don't want to see that disappear. Yeah. So overall, I think, uh, you know, it does, I guess, leave out the individual player. Um, but I think it almost entices them a little bit more to find like a home in the game. Uh, and then for the smaller outfits, uh, we do agree at the moment, the smaller outfits are essentially left out. And I think the alliance thing that we were kind of talking about earlier would would help with that. Um, having, you know, multiple small outfits that have really good relationships with the other uh, to, you know, kind of group up, combine forces, get 48 right. people and play in this game mode. Again, Server Smash is Outfit Wars in a nutshell. It's outfits in multiple outfits for a faction fighting multiple outfits from another faction. That's okay. You can still call it Outfit Wars, not to be Server Smash. It still works. You still get to see how did backs do? You know, what do they, how do they, you know, hear the stats for the, for the match? How, how many bases did they cap? How many people did they kill? And you can look at those things and know how an outfit did. It doesn't just have to be backs against AOD or something like that. That's okay. We can still do that, but it's also okay to have this alliance system or have multiple outfits partake in this event to showcase it. And I know at the end of the day, people want to know who is the best outfit, okay? And, you know, that's something that we're going to have to, the dev team's going to have to look into further and how they actually want to showcase that. Yeah. And I think the second question also kind of talks about this a bit uh, about uh, would the ability for an outfit to temporarily sign up for like a, like a group of outfits. Or I think that's what this is. It says, how about the ability to sign up with an outfit temporary for Outfit Wars? Um, and I think that kind of just builds upon that a little bit more where it's like yeah i think you know we're, we're very stubborn about our tags because we're passionate about our outfit tags like we've been in these outfits for years and we're not just going to leave our outfit to play in like a game mode so um yeah i think you know having that ability to make like a temporary outfit or even maybe making it an alliance thing where it's like this new system that's above the outfits where it's like where it's in between the faction and the the outfit where it's like this sort of alliance where like we've made the infantry national federation of outfits or something like Ooh, that. Ooh, cringe. I love it though. Go ahead. Yeah, that's but that's what people love in this right. community. So Absolutely. Yeah. Uh I think that would that would definitely help with fixing it. Or everything. like we talked about earlier though, just have it small. It could be it's okay to have a 24 v 24 and I hate to say it, if you keep it three factions v 24 and then also have a 48 v 48 v 48. It's okay to have those two levels, and it's going to make it way more accessible for people. Yes, the solo player is not going to be able to. There's not going to be an outfit wars where there's one player from an outfit. Okay, here's send out your best champion. You know, it's like okay, here here comes a flick. It's like oh out oh it's saying uh gets crushed. You know, it's like okay that's it. And like okay now hood's the best elf. You know what I mean? Um, it's okay if we we don't have just one player coming out. It's okay, but I think it's okay to have a twenty four v twenty four or twelve v twelve or uh, forty eight v forty eight. Yeah. Um, it have different levels so different outfits can partake because planet side like literally it's part of the game it's like wh- what do you specialize in backs oh infantry oh competitive play okay but you're not an air outfit you don't do vehicles a lot that's not your specialty that's in planet side but now we're we have to be we have to be everything now we had to be construction we had to be air we had to be vehicles but that's not necessarily live play like why can't we have that mixture same thing with like oh you're a smaller outfit you're not a huge zerg fit that's okay there's a place for you on, on live but it's like okay let's transition that to outfit wars that's what we're an outfit that's been around for a long time there's a lot of outfits that size why are we not part of outfit wars yeah and if we even want to be at this point i don't even think we want to be because of the way yeah. that it, that's played out but that's that's yeah. another 
deeper topic. So. Yeah, and we could dive deeper on like how it's just there's the rewards that for winning aren't that enticing. Uh, you know, putting well, yourself through all of it is like. Uh, I don't think the rewards will be good until they flesh out. I was saying, like, could you imagine right now? It's like, what, what if they went to a one v one, and they had good rewards, right? And they like fixed it, and outfit wars was fun. But right now, it's like, let's say okay, we're gonna give ten thousand dollars to the team that wins, and it's just like triple thing, like you know, three factions, and somebody gets double team. You're like, and you miss out on that. I would be pissed, yeah. dude. Or even if, if it's like, won, you know, it's some like money. new Iraq, some armor. It doesn't have to be like money, I guess, because it's there's too many people, and it's like, how do you split well, that? Well, I, I wanted to make something that's like, you know, like, yeah, it could be like a, you get a gold anchor or something. It's like, yeah. but could you imagine like if you missed out on that because you got double teamed and you knew you would have won otherwise? Yeah, because you're the better outfit. And that's essentially what like I think recursion from Connery dealt with where they they lost out on getting like i think you get like an outfit like a tag in front of uh your name and that's somebody in chat was like three dollars and fifty cents each because <laughs> there's so many right. people playing but uh yeah like y you know they lost out on getting like the you know as a big of a meme as the reward was they missed out on it because the two other outfits were like we're just gonna zerg them and then whoever wins wins but uh, or like backs, yeah. like okay, we really want we really want this reward of like the be the coolest looking camel in the game. It's like oh sorry, you don't have forty eight players. Oh sorry, you're you you're the qualification. You guys didn't play twenty four seven or have enough people on all the time to to, to predict it, and we didn't have a chance to even try for the reward. Yeah. That's what's even more annoying. Like even if we wanted to partake, we couldn't. Yeah. So uh, I, I I don't think they're gonna have good rewards until they have it fleshed out mm -hmm. the way they want. Definitely. Um, do you think there should be restrictions like weapons and vehicles? And if so, what would you suggest? Oh man, dude, I'm passionate about it. And I, well, should I, I go mean, to the bathroom? I'll go take a shower. I'll be back. You'll no, still I'll be, be quick, talking. Be <laughs> Zero smash started this. Okay. PIL is perfected it. Um, and they keep up to date with it. Okay. But the idea that if something is broken or not fun or is cheesy or it doesn't really showcase skill or we're striking something is just not skill. Okay. Um, to, to take that out, to, to, to make more room for quality content in the actual environment, I think is okay. Um, you know, less abuse of things like movement and speed. Like, you know, that's why PL is taking out a lot of those things. That's why ambusher jets are taken out. Um, because it can be abused and like, yeah, that one player that's abusing it, it's gonna get it's gonna get nerfed and they nerfed it by taking it out. So in Outfit Wars, I don't think that's a bad idea or um, restricting things to be simpler. I always thought Server Smash would be a little bit better if you didn't have this huge air ball of like A to G just like rolling around. It's more about like, okay, if you get in a galaxy, we're gonna have there's just gonna be a, a galaxy to like transport. There's gonna be no guns on it. You're gonna have to have reavers that like, can cover you um, to get to your objective. There's more of just like this air game and not so much A to G farming, like almost kind of really reduce the impact of A to G farming. So you have the infantry on the ground fighting infantry on the ground. You have these transports of like, let's get to the next fight. And to get to the next fight, like, okay, you, you need to be escorted by your own air. And really kind of separate the domain so they have this power. It's like, you need to have a decent air force so that you can get your guys to the next space, you know? Okay, yeah, there's redeploy side as well. But to change the, the domains a little bit by restricting things, like maxes have, maxes don't need to be all over the point in fighting infantry. It stalls the fight. If it stalls the fight on live, it stalls the fight in server smash. Just throwing 400 grenades on a point is, and then resonates on top of it. And it's just this like ball of like, you're watching it and there's just death and destruction and nothing, nothing of, of value is being gained there. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's very fun for people to experience either. By restricting things, you can really kind of like show off talent. You can show off skill. You can show off ideas, meta, and things can build around that and simplifying things. I think helps with that as well. So I don't think it's bad to restrict things or to at least test it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted Service Smash to do more. Like, let's just test it. Yes, I'm an infantry person. I love infantry, but let's just test it. I don't want to huddle inside the point when there's 48 air outside. They can't kill me. We can't come out. It becomes this weird standoff. It's like, let's get away from that. Let's showcase infantry. PIL is infantry. Let's just showcase that skill set and that talent and what's good about it. And mm -hmm. I think we can do that, but we, we, we would have to restrict some things and a lot of things, especially on the scale that outfit wars is. Yeah. And I don't know I if think, that makes sense. No, but. it does. And I think to kind of build on that, uh, like pill does or not even pill PSB does a great job of testing out bases prior to putting them into an active map pool. And whether it's for the most competitive top tier mode, which is pill or it's down to just pickups where anyone can play. We don't add maps to the, 
to the pickups pool or the pill pool without thorough like investigation, testing, player feedback, stuff like that. Uh, so when you have this sort of situation where you're doing like a, like almost a publicly sourced uh, outfit participation thing where you're beta testing and you're enticing via like the 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 winning of an award or something like that uh, and making it the reason why a beta test will occur you you kind of lose that that ability to have something well fleshed out and ready to go in the beginning if it was more of a quieted down locked in 1v1v1 if they wanted to keep it the exact same and they chose outfits based on their own selection because they've done this i think for the bastion smash they specifically went to 1tr and went to other outfits to get them to do the bastion smash like they could test there's no problem with testing it's oh yeah for sure televising and making hype and trying to get people to watch and then they come and they're extremely underwhelmed that's that's where i think the issue kind of falls um well, I would like them to play around with like the value of things. Like if yeah. you want to have a banshee, and we talked about that. I think I kind of just be, like yeah. glossed over it, but we talked it about be. the ability to kind of like min and max opportunities to give more focus on inf infantry play. So you kind of well, talked like, about like taking guns off of like a galaxy to make, make it, it cheaper, so yeah. cost less and stuff. Yeah, it's like I just want a transport reaver. Let me get to my base. Let me cost less. I'm not going to do anything on the way because I can't shoot. Um, but uh, or you could do something to where like I think about StarCraft two, and it's like to get to the tier three units or to get to that level of 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 valuable units, you have to spend time and money and resources to get there. And if you lose it. It takes time and money and resources to come back. When I think about server smash and or outfit wars, it's like you shot the banshee down. There's seven more. He can go back now because he was alive long enough, and he can just respawn and come right back. Mm -hmm. There's not that feeling of, like, we've eliminated this asset from the field. And that guy's going to have to come down here and play infantry with us for, for X amount of time. And I like that that idea of, like, okay, we just got our first Banshee Mazi up. Okay, wh where are we going to send this asset to, to support us? And, like, I think it helps with the, the domain balance of, like, as infantry – I'm just trying to fight other infantry. And now you got seven maxes on the point. We're out popped. And now you got seven Banshee Mossies here. And now, you, you know what I mean? Like, and then you get, a, now you just dropped an orbital strike on us. Yes. Okay. You killed us. We're dead. Thank you. And the, like, you take away a little bit of that snowball effect too, if you restrict things. And I would like to see that more instead of just, you have access to it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I don't think that's a bad idea. It's like slowly it's like, okay, there's no Banshee Mossies. There's no A to G at the beginning of the stage. And you have to like earn that by capping bases and getting resources. And like, it's an expensive selection for your outfit to even purchase. Yeah. And I like that idea of like the way that CSGO does it. Like you buy weapons, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was actually going to go into that where, you know, planet side resources are limited, but they're not scarce. Scarcity is, is it's non-existent in planet side because you receive your resources on a tick basis basis right. excuse me so every minute you get a deposit of 50 nanites or 100 if you're a member uh and i remember like people would buy membership during like a server smash secretly so they can get more nanites but the, the you know the the sense of resources they aren't you aren't rewarded resources based on your performance you're given to the, you're getting you're getting it almost like on a on a ration basis like you were getting this right. amount this time this but a game like csgo your resources are based on your performance. You, If you completely dominate the team, the maximum amount of money you can have, it's similar to Planet Side where you have a maximum amount of resources where it's 750 nanites. And in G, uh, CSGO, the maximum amount of money you can have to purchase things like your weapons, your utility, your armor is $16,000. So if you're completely demolishing the other team, you'll just have 16 k But if the team starts to do better and starts to kill you more, and you have to spend more of your money, you have to go into your pool of resources, you're not just going to get $50 every minute. You need to start being better. You need to start killing the other team. You need to plant the bomb. You got to do all of the objectives that get you resources. And uh, I mean, yeah, you could even do it like with the certs. Like, you know, like, and I, I, how deep do you want to go with it? I don't know. But it is very interesting to think about. It's like, Okay, I start off with the the gospel. I really need to get to the anchor. That's where I'm gonna be. That's where I'm gonna shine. So let me, you know, everyone starts with the gospel. Or you could do like a em one. Like a, everyone has a bad weapon, right? You start off with, and it's like, okay, I get some kills. I've earned it. Okay, now I can get my anchor. Okay, now I want um, access to like survivalist, or I want access to conch grenades or frag grenades or something like that. And you gotta buy into it. And then maybe the same thing with like a banshee mods. It's like you have to perform and get to this. It's like a kill streak. A Banshee Mazi to me is a kill streak that anyone can pull right now. 
-hmm. It's like, let's use that as an example. Okay, you get up to X amount of kills and you can pull your Banshee Mossy, or you could tie it into outfit resources for for your outfit, right? And then you have somebody that can manage that. And it's like, okay, um, it's like I got a lot of kills, but I, I can't pilot. And as a pilot, I can't get kills on the ground, so I will never get into my Banshee Mossy. It's like, okay, we have enough outfit resources now. I'm going to to, to let, you know, um, what's his name? Frogface get into his Sky Chariot, and now he'll be in his Banshee Mossy, and he has access to it use your resource, you know, use this asset well. That would be so cool to see in Outfit Wars. Because then you build meta around that. Then you build like, okay, we lost that asset. We didn't protect that. And like you kind of build structure around it instead of just saying, okay, we'll go, we'll go pull another one. And you'll be here in two seconds. Yeah. I think that would be very interesting. And I think it would create, a is, be cool. Because yeah. it, it, again, it, it bounces the main. Instead of 10, 20 snowballs of Banshee Mozzies, it's just that one there. And it's like, it's still super powerful. But I might be able to decimate it. You know, there's this, there's this risk and reward, and it balances things out a little bit on 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 the ground. Yeah, and 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 I think just to clarify, like we're talking more on the side of a competitive game mode for Planet Side, and Outfit Wars is a competitive game mode. It's the competitive game mode that's being pushed onto the community at the moment. So we, you know, having that sense of being able to make more resources, whatever the resource will be called, scarce, so that it's rewarding better gameplay rather than just waiting. Or, hey, I'm out of resources, Aflick, can you pull this instead this time? You can just unlock it and then I'll fly it. Like, there, there's, no, there's no reward for being good. The only right. reward, I guess, is winning. But Or managing, and it goes back to progression, dude. Mm -hmm. Nobody has Liberator range in StarCraft Two and 30 Liberators on the start. You slowly build that up, and if you lose them, guess what? Now you, instead you don't you don't just get thirty off the start. It's like okay, I had two, I lost one, now I have one. I have to slowly rebuild that up again. Same thing with Banshee Mozzies. I don't think that's a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll hit two more questions. Uh, okay. One is, what's the point of gold, silver, bronze tiers in Outfit Wars if only a handful of outfits are ever going to sit at the top, that gold tier? Outfits like AOD are kind of seen as the bronze tier, whereas outfits like BUA are seen as that gold tier. So there's no way to anticipate an exciting bracket upset if skill suits can just outperform any competitor by resources alone, let alone skill. So I, I think the question here is really based on what, and I, and I think this question is also very based on the current qualification process where these gold, silver, and bronze tiers aren't, they're not gauged based on their skill they're gauged on the way the points are set up so the randomness of life mm -hmm. yeah and and i guess that randomness is good as long as the way that scope that they're looking at what is good makes sense and uh right we were kind of talking right. about this where we were like how do we do it so that the devs can see like this is a good outfit and i would argue that they've kind of already figured out a way they just need to broaden that scope uh, they recently, I think it was a month or two ago, they changed the way a base cap goes to an outfit from just all combined scores to just like the top 10 performers of each outfit that participated at that base. You could broaden that scope and just roll it back even more, where it's the top 48 people that play during Outfit Wars. Outfit Wars is just a longer base cap technically. And instead of top 10, just make it top 48 because those, you're going to have 48 people playing. And your best 48 players are likely going to be the 48 players that you have play. Um, so I, I'm in, whoever sent this question, they're all anonymous, obviously, but whoever right. sent this question, uh, personally, like I am in agreement. There is no point for the current state of the game, but if they were to tweak and not want to change everything with the qualification process and do what we're asking, where we're saying like a sign up thing, where just like, just let people play. And we um, go into a bracket. A yeah. normal tournament bracket, which I think would address your question directly. But yeah, yeah if, they, if they don't want to. And there would be do cool. That, then... There'd be seeds. Like, you could make it like March Madness. Oh, like, dude, yeah. the number one team would versus the number eight team. And if the number eight team beats the number one team, that's like, bro, holy crap. Did you see that? And then yeah. obviously you get to the we, point where you hit the You can center. bet on it, dude. Yeah. And they, yeah. Fantasy <laughs> outfit wars. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll make the app now, man. I'll make the app now. I'll be a, I'll be a not a millionaire because there's just not enough PS2 uh, hype, it, but, uh, you know, maybe I can be a, ten, a $10 holder or something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and we have one more question. Uh, what kind of tools would you like spectators to have access to that could direct more information to them? Such as timers for jungle camp spawns on League of Legends or loadouts shown in CSGO, etc. 
I think this is a really, really good question. We could go into this. <laughs> this could be a whole podcast <laughs> right here. Yeah, but well, this is something that hasn't been done before, okay? Mm-hmm. Even though it's been eight years. Planet Side has really not been... There's been games that are big like it, but they just don't scale the same or haven't lasted as long. Or maybe they have, because Planet Side, honestly, popularity is pretty pretty, pretty small. And it's grown recently. Um, but there's so many things I think they could add, and it just depends on how you want to do it. Do you want to have, you know, like COVID's gone or something, you want to have, you know, some of your devs or whoever, you want to have a casting team, and they're all in the room together, and you have this, like, kind of like a big tactical map, right? As cringe as that might sound, but it might be cool for viewers and, like, like I was describing earlier, okay, we see where Outfit Bax is at, okay? We see that they have, you know, a squad over here. Um, they're just, there's no fight going on at the H artifact, but we do see, you know, AOD on the map here and they're fighting. They're about to, you know, approach the base that um, B Way's at. Let's zoom in on this fight here. And you still have that, like, almost that mini map, but of like the entire map displayed and you can kind of see it. But then they go down and they kind of focus on this fight, right? And then they can kind of pull you up and, then, and, and, and go down somewhere else. But I think having more of a, a tactical overlay. Again, that does sound cringy, but I think that's something they need for this size. Yeah. You need to have it scale up and then boom, let's scale down. And you're going to miss things. There's no way around it. You're going to miss cool things happening. Um, and that's just the nature of the size of the event. Um, but I do think a, a tactical map and, and having multiple co- these co-casters available to that would be huge. Yeah. And I think to build off that too, it's like give give more opportunities for statistics to be tracked outside of like yo how'd you do and oh i got 87 kills it was crazy like making it like you know leaderboard not only for the teams where we see like team one got x y and z uh but also you know you have player x did amazing he was the best player he got so many kills uh this person had the best was the best medic revived the most people uh giving us more like statistics and analytics to look at to help us find our own meta of like we had the IVI period of time in Planet Side. Now we're kind of in the KPM period. We had the KDR right. period back right. in the day. Um, and also, I agree. I was gonna say. I remember back in the day there was like this, this, this thing that everybody was like, "Man, I'd love it if I could have like an iPad that just had the map." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I could just see and like I could be like, "Oh, like I could press on the map and it would be like, oh, this is a forty-eight to ninety-six. But, you know, as a viewer, it'd be cool while I'm watching the cast. Yeah, to have like a side thing open where I can track, I can watch the leaderboard. I can hover over different bases in the map and see what the pop is. Uh, I can see something that's so ambiguous for everybody. For me, too, I haven't asked anyone. Is outfit resources, outfit resources and Cordium are used throughout the Outfit Wars uh, like battle, I guess you could say. But us, the viewers, we have no idea like how yeah, much very cool. they have. Oh. B-Way saving up. Okay, it looks like they have like you know seven hundred fifty resources. Like, are they gonna are they gonna get a Banshee Mazi here? Like, what's like, what are they gonna yeah. spend this on? It's like, oh no, they're not. They're actually gonna be pulling three galaxies and, and like, oh okay, like, whoa, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. And that's why I think like a, I don't know, it'd be so much work for the devs, but they have like a larger base and have more of like a fluid. Is it though? Well, I don't know, maybe it's not. Just, I mean, it's PSA just and, data and, yeah, and it's analytics, true. and we we have people like if you look at the the pill script, <clears throat> the pill script is it's completely made by just the community. And it, and it tracks stuff like kills, HSR, accuracy, uh, grenade assist. So right. a lot of different stuff. But at the end of the well, day, well, I was talking about like making like a like a, almost like a larger base to fight over and like have this like weird like kind of oh, like yeah, front yeah, line yeah. that's closer. Because right now it feels like okay, like there's a there's people all the way up here and there's people all the way down here and then there's this going on over here. Well, that's kind of the three-way nature. But if you have two, and it's almost like, okay, we see that you know, Bax is stonewall. Bax A squads. It looks like the you know, A flicking company is you know, stonewalled at this objective. They can't get past it. We're gonna go over to Shocker and you know, B squad. And it looks like they've actually got the gen down. It looks like they they've exploited the gap. They're going in, or you know, Bax C is just dropped behind you know, enemy lines to you know, on top of B ways, whatever. And you know, they just took it out. And we're gonna go there real quick, and we're gonna show you guys what's going on because this is a stalemate. Nothing's you know. Pop- and off right here and i don't know just kind of bring it almost closer but still keep it the pop kind of spread out if that makes sense instead of having like these weird like pockets of like there's just a fight here there's a fight here and there's no like they don't they don't seem to connect like we said there's no progression it would almost be nice to kind of have that progression with maybe a larger base with more objectives and like things to like to do almost i don't know it seems like it that would be uh very ambitious but it would be almost interesting 
But yeah. I mean, maybe it could develop into that in, in, in a different way. So Yeah. And I think overlaying and providing more statistics and analytics for the people watching and for the caster, because us, like, again, like me and Gallus as casters, like we use a lot of the information that we see from the script on like our other monitors as things to help us watch. Like if I see that, that Saiyan is going completely mad and he's getting like he's 30 plus when it's his net score and he's getting like he has 60 kills or something like that like i'm now i know to go follow saiyan a little more so if if i see alpha squad for aod is getting the most kills i can you know more like mm, look more into aod's alpha squad and see like what they're up to uh, yeah, you could be like I could be chatting about oh this way, and you're like, hey, like Ava, like okay, Aody's popping off. There's something going on mm -hmm. elsewhere on the map. We're gonna go there real quick, and User then it's a over the there. Channel. Oh, hello, the heck? Oh, it's Onich. Oh, it's Onich. What's up again? Uh, but User was moved out of your channel. <laughs> <laughs> Anchors, cut that out. Uh, <laughs> and and I think uh, you know for the viewer side as well, it's one of those situations where. Uh, it gives you more context to understand what's going on, builds that depth towards like what we were talking about earlier. Like, is the coach going to do this or is he going to do that? I think he's going to do this move or ooh, unexpected move. He did this instead uh, because of we're also aware of what's going on. Like we right. see B-Way has a certain amount of cordium. They have a certain amount of these resources. And then from there, they're going to make these decisions. Oh, they right. might save their resources so that they can build right. up a little more over time. I was like, oh, Bax is still stuck on EM1s. Like, they haven't invested any money. It's like, oh, and here we go. They got they got two, uh, um, you know, what, what, Hammer Reavers. What the f what are they called? The Shotgun Reavers? Whatever. Oh, Jackhammer? No, it's not the, the Reaver. Or, the area, oh. The um, Skynet. The Blastoids. Um, <laughs> I, I don't remember. The, um, Air Hammer. The, Air Hammer. Uh, Air Hammer, uh, yeah. It's Jackhammer. Yeah, it's like, oh, they, okay. So they're going to sacrifice on the ground. They're going to get something <laughs> in the air, you know? What? Yeah, you good, bro? You see something on my screen or something, dude? No. Are you just looking at my arms, bro? You're like, oh, like, what and... you see, bro, for the one time? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's there's a lot. This is a really good question, by the way. Whoever uh, whoever said this Blastoids, he said, uh, there's a lot of stuff that, like that could be displayed for the viewer, both on an external basis and on an overlay basis. And, like, we were, we've been making a lot of uh, resemblances to CSGO, but... CSGO will tell you utility wise like mm -hmm. how well both teams are like oh this team has a lot of like full utility that flashes smokes molotovs they're they're great on their utility but the other team doesn't have as much money because they weren't managing the resources well so they only have like one grenade so they're gonna have to work on uh conservation and making sure that they make the smart decisions and do things perfectly or else they're probably gonna lose same thing and that with would, money yeah see that would eliminate like this like we're gonna throw 30 resonates on like 40 guys and it's like up down up down kill up down up kill. It's just very boring to watch. Very bad, not skill. Like, and it's like and technically, if you wanted to put your resources into that, you could. It's still available, right? But it gives it. It forces you to like think and like. I'm not gonna throw that resonate so that I get my six guys up and then they get killed right away. That's a waste. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you have a team that does that, right? But it's not smart. Like you can kind of build this greater game, um, which I think Planet Side is outside of just personal shooting. You can create a, a larger thing, and you can have like this force commander, right? Like it, that server smash had, and like have this like uh, person that's not necessarily on the ground in the game, kind of managing these resources and giving them out, or even the players, I guess, could also earn resources and then buy things. But I think that's the way to go, and I think it'd be so cool to have that. I, again, that's I mean, maybe that's a lot of work for the dev team. I don't know, but I it's also a lot of work to to make PSA and then to make Desolation and for it to flop, right? Yeah. So why not go a little bit further with it? Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much potential. It's just that depth is required. And once the depth is there, kind of like how we have in certain stuff from live play, server smash in the past, lane smash and pill that we have right now. Uh, if that if that depth is kind of applied to these game modes, it could be successful. And it won't have to be one of those washed up things that kind of get thrown away. Um, but other than that, I think that's kind of, that's kind of it for today's podcast. Uh, is there anything else you kind of want to talk about or do you think we covered everything? I think we did pretty well. I mean, like I said, we can, we could talk about Outfit Wars for, for many, many hours, but I don't think we need to do that. I think we, we touched base pretty well. I mean, it's something that, again, it's back shelf. So I don't think we need to talk about it for four hours. We, we hit a lot of the main points. 
we don't know what the dev team is going to do with this coming up. It could be nothing. It could be terrible. It could be a great idea. So we just kind of have to let it play out. Even though I'm not super hopeful, I am still hopeful. Um, and I think we covered everything, man. Um, I got vacation coming up next week. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go. Um, yes, COVID's still out there. We will be safe. We will protect ourselves. Yes, um, uh, keep it secret. Keep it safe. So uh, <laughs> I think that's something that's important that needs to be referenced. So absolutely. Do you got anything else, man? What's going on with you? What's you got uh, a snake on your shirt? Like, is that six six six? Is that Satan? Like, no, what are we says, dealing with? It here? says white. It says white on it. I don't know. It's a dangerous time for that man. You should be yeah. very careful. Oh, yeah, I shouldn't have um, worn this. <laughs> and you said, and you said Grandmaster earlier in the stream, and I got a little nervous. That's what they um, call them, GMs. Right, right, no, 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 right. The other right, thing is, it's right. called something. Well, I, yeah, it's probably it, just gonna be the Aflic podcast coming up pretty soon, guys. Because Under Armour, dude, bro, he doesn't know about Under Armour. Out of my mind, dude. I even got red Under Armour shirts on, and I still got the Under Armour socks on on deck. Okay, keep it stacked out <laughs> yes, here. Sir. I just bought two new Under Armour shirts, uh, workout shirts, because you know the other ones weren't smelling the best. Because you know we were pumping those five pound weights because it's all we have access to right now in COVID. Uh, but we're still out here, okay? Um, yeah, we're still doing it, you know. And I think uh, I didn't have. Oh man, I didn't bring it. The other sponsor, man. Shout out to Creatine. Uh, keep my muscles pumped. Um, yeah, no discounts or anything like that. So it's not even a sponsor. It's just something that I use. Yes, but sir. Would highly recommend if you're trying to get. <laughs> Jacked yeah. out of your mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me, I They're don't. They're so like... serious with outfit wars, man. You know, I am passionate. No, no yeah, no, no, yeah. We gotta. There was a lot of passion that came through <laughs> with it. We gotta, we gotta bring it down a notch. But uh, yeah. Uh, for me, uh, if you guys wanna check out what's going on this weekend, uh, the Pill Invitational is happening. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. that's gonna be July 10th, 11th, and 12th. So starting tomorrow. And uh, it's gonna be a really fun. It's gonna be a really fun time. I think uh, a lot of people are gonna join it. A lot of good matches that are gonna happen. And uh, for those of you who are like unfamiliar with Pill, you can kind of watch and see kind of what we're talking about when it comes to having you know a solid competitive mode that's based in Planet Side with with um, decent to good casting. Yeah, and like you know, good casting, solid well, analytics that are like shown on the screen. So you know, it's just some good stuff all across the board. Um, but other than that, uh, you can see our Twitch links are kind of on the top here, uh, twitch.tv forward slash shock there. And then we're already on Aflix channel. So twitch.tv forward slash Aflix. Also youtube.com forward slash Aflix. Uh, we will be uploading this to YouTube. And if you did miss the first, uh, podcast that we did two weeks ago, you can also check that out. We talked about, uh, Planet Side Infantry League and honestly a good watch, uh, getting ready to watch the, uh, invitational tournament that's coming up too. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> And then I think we're, and we're not sure what we're going to do yet with the podcast. I think we're we're kind of testing the grounds right now. We're no we're not bringing in people to to interview or bringing in people to uh, talk about topics yet. And you know I think we're going to do some I uh, kind of break it up so it's not just like okay here's Outfit Wars. It's like well great I don't give a shit about Outfit Wars so I'm not going to yeah. watch this one. It's like we're going to add some other things in here um, as we get going. I know Anchors is a little little tied up right now with some uh, personal stuff. Um, he's the one that does all the editing um, and I think he's going to do you know potentially add more to the podcast um, especially when we're so doing the podcast um and that might not happen that might happen we'll see he's also doing like the twitch highlights for for um my stream um and we only have one up right now you know he's working on the second one but again he has a lot going on so we haven't dropped that yet i know it's close uh but shout out to anchors for his editing and, and for kind of facilitating and pushing this forward um to get us to even do the youtube and, and the podcast and and um so yeah yeah definitely yeah shout out anchors he's been doing a great job editing uh, but yeah, other than that, don't forget to follow this channel, uh, check out my channel as well. Link is above. Just write that into your search bar and then don't forget to subscribe to YouTube, uh, Aflix YouTube channel forward slash Aflick uh, spelled exactly the same. I'm pretty sure. And, uh, yeah, check out the previous podcast that we made. Don't forget to check out that Twitch highlight video. It's really funny. And, yeah, uh, put a comment on the on the YouTube if you want. Uh, I know people have suggestions. Uh, like I was kind of hard to, hard to hear. I keep interrupting you both. So sorry. No, no, yeah, you and know, I, I took that in. I think you're better um, now. I think you. I, I was like tweaking the volumes while we were going here. Well, I got that new. I got that new. Yes, uh, sir. That new headset. I got that clean, all black with the silver trim. I that chrome baby <laughs> looking uh, looking too good. Um, so hopefully I sound better. But if you guys have constructive criticism or or you want to meme on me, you want to see my hairline, whatever, um, you know, just put it in the YouTube uh, comment section we'll try to improve things and add things i know i have nothing on my back wall it looks great and it's very interactive uh very professional um and that's probably how it's going to stay because this is the last room in our house that we bought that we're going to be updating um 
So I will, you know, I can't put a gold anchor back there. I can't 3D print one because that's cringe. You know, when people come over and, and they're like, what is that? It's like, oh, you wouldn't understand. It's plant side too. It's nothing. There's like 50, <laughs> there's like 50 viewers on Twitch. It's fine. It's not a big deal. So, but if you have suggestions, you know, put it in the YouTube comments. Um, we'd yeah. love to hear from you guys. Yeah. And we're working on some recurring segments too. So like he said, we can break them, break the podcast up a little so we can have a little more depth in it. So yeah. it's like we don't care about your topic, too. but we'll look at, okay, you got something to say about Reddit. Okay. Or, you know, whatnot. So we'll try to make it a little bit more interesting um, as we go, but this is new for us. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And keep trolling. I, I love reading chat while I do this too. A look looking like he's in a zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to end it i uh yo thank you guys for watching uh we'll Dang, see you that's <laughs> rough uh wish a flick a, a good vacation i hope you stay safe stay healthy my friend and, and yeah the uh, podcast actually might not continue i could get covid and be dead within 14 days so uh we'll see it might just be the shocker podcast bruh that could be I, really sad man i didn't i didn't like that but <laughs> Uh, I didn't. I didn't like that, bro. You can't end it on that note, bro. Oh, you're right. Well, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Nah, stay healthy, bro. Enjoy your vacation. You definitely need it. And uh, feel good. Feel great. Chat. Go get them. Yeah, and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Hopefully, again in two weeks. Strength uh, and honor. So, further, bye, further. chat. Have a good go, one. Go, go. All teams. Red team hold. Blue team go. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. You can cut it out. Cut it out. Nah, nah, nah. Do that shit real life. Fuck cocksuckers.